Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the uh, meeting of the Waterbury Select Board for Monday, January 23rd, 2023. I'm finally starting to be able to say 2023 versus 2022. Um, we welcome you all. The first item on our agenda is to approve the agenda. Mr. Chair, I move to approve the agenda. I'll second. Thank you. We have a motion to approve oh and a God. second. Any further discussion? Could we just add a super quick housing task force update yep. under select board items? Thank you. We, we could, we'll add that to be as, as you suggested before the meeting. Do you want to entertain one other consent item or you want to save it for next week? What is it? I depend upon what it is. I just got the information because I checked my email. The um, Winterfest is looking to have a big tree brew tasting event as part of Winterfest at Rusty Parker Park from 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. on, uh, I think it's the 4th. Um, there's some information in here about roping off a section in the middle of the park between the fat tire demo. Um, Mark Fryer will obtain the catering permit, which he was not able to get on the portal and do today. I can approve the permit, but I need this select board to tell him that he can serve alcohol in the park. Don't they, don't they need to file for a permit before we can take action? Well, if that's the case, you no, won't be able to do it until no. next week. No, then. because it used to be the case because the Department of Liquor Control was issuing the license, but now Karen can issue the license. So the, the issue really is the select boards, You want, the town owns the property. Is it okay to do it is the question. Not, you're not issuing a liquor license. Okay. So, I hope we do it as C on select board items so that we can discuss it, but leave consent as written. Okay. okay. And we Thank can you. just make a separate motion for that. Okay. Thank and, you. Uh, just a uh, point of order. I'm going to recuse myself on that vote. And that way you can do that and vote with consent. Because I am on the leadership committee of Winterfest. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I guess it's not one of the abstention. Okay, thank you. Next item on the agenda is the public section of our agenda. What the agenda? Yeah, that was just to approve the agenda. Oh, okay. Amendment. That was to approve the agenda. Now, uh, can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda items? So moved. Thank you. Second? Second. Motion to a second. Any further discussion on the consent agenda items? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. <laughs> Now is the time that we have uh, for the public, the public, um, anyone who wants to address the select board, feel free to do so if it's not an item that is formally on the official agenda. If anyone has something to say, if they can come forward. Come on down. <clears throat> Good evening. Um, Thank you, name and we'll my name is Christopher Shank, uh, and I think I know most of you. Um, I am the select board's uh, alternate delegate for CB Fiber. Uh, and so we were trying to get on the agenda, but I just barely missed the deadline. But um, I just wanted to, uh, first of all, you know, remind the select board and everybody listening that uh, in 2022, um, Waterbury committed $50,000 in ARPA funds uh, to CB Fiber. <coughs> The Vermont Community Broadband Board, or VCBB, then matched that $50,000, giving the town a total of $100,000 towards the CB Fiber project. Uh, this $100,000 can be used uh, and will be used um, as the town of Waterbury wishes for that project, um, most likely for things like installation costs for more challenging, unserved, and underserved homes. Um, CB Fiber is very appreciative of this generosity. And now in 2023, the VCBB has renewed this offer uh, to any towns who contributed less than $100,000 uh, 
of their own ARCA funds, um, again, offering to match those funds up to a total of $100,000, including last year's contribution. Um, therefore, CB Fiber is asking the Waterbury Select Board to, um, to put on March 7th's ballot that Waterbury contribute another $50,000 to take advantage of the VCBB matching funds. Thank you. Can I ask a question? I'm just wondering, last time there was a time limit uh, on this matching funds. Is that the case again this time? Um, yes, I believe it's March 31st, but I can get back to you on that and verify for sure. Just, just for the record, we did have a, trade, a bunch of emails with Linda. Yes. So that's why it's in the parking lot. She, she indicated to us that CV Fiber would not be seeping our funds this year. A little bit ago, I understand things change, but yes. we didn't exclude you on purpose. Is all I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, we understand. Yeah, and and we were not intending because we didn't think that you know an offer like that would would come again. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems like a, a good opportunity to take some. Free money or at least mm -hmm. double our money. So. Any yeah. other questions? Um, if the select board gave less than 50, say 25, for example, would you still be able to double the 25? Or is there yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Any additional funds up to the total of 100,000 gets matched. Okay. Now, is that total of $100,000, is that inclusive of the 50,000 already given? Yes. Yes. So just <clears throat> A maximum of another fifty dollars. Correct. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Thank you, Chris. Right, thank you very much. Appreciate it. We, we, we like the brothers too. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Are there right. any other members of the public who wish to say something? I believe there are. But that's not okay. There being none, we'll move on to the agenda. First item on the agenda is um, select board items, decision on town meeting day stop. Uh, and I have, a, I have one update. Um, so sure. Danny, I believe, had asked the question last meeting about Australian ballot. And her question, and I'm, I might struggle to phrase it, but is mm -hmm. under the emergency bill, which is yet to pass, but the governor, we presume, will sign it, which allows Australian ballot. Can there be a vote via Australian ballot to move to that format permanently? And the answer from the Secretary of State's office is no, that the bill specifically forbids that. So if you want to ever move to Australian ballot, you've got to have a town meeting day and put on the event. Thanks for that, And I think from um, our perspective, we just need to know how to plan and the clock is ticking. Um, so if everyone supports Town meeting day hasn't been working towards, and we don't really need to, from Karen and I's perspective, we don't need to have much of a conversation. If there's some debate, then there's some debate. Melissa? I was just saying, point of information, so if there is a bill that is not yet passed that would <coughs> potentially give us flexibility, but it's not yet on the books, is that Pass the legislature, it's on the governor's desk. The governor's desk. Okay. Are you talking about a different bill than the one he just talked about? No, I was just asking if anything had changed since Friday, which of course not, but I'm just making sure I knew where we stood. So the legislature has passed it, but it's not officially up yet. And this, what you just clarified is that it gives flexibility for the articles of town meeting to be by Australian ballot, but as we talked about at our last meeting, oh, see the owl, um, there's no one. Um, that we can't choose to change that. Though I would also just say, I felt like we as a board at the last meeting did think that regardless of format, not answering the question, having an advisory question about the town's interest was of interest to the board, separate from the decision. I, I agree with Melissa. At least um, that could be a discussion among the community. If, he, you know, it would be non-binding, but it would be something that if folks in the community feel another format other than traditional town meeting day is, uh, you know, you know the, that's what the community wants, you know, at least we can hear that. And then if there are some ideas, there probably should be some sort of a committee and stuff like that coming forth with a proposal for, for a, uh, on the warning of next year's just to move town meeting to, to another kind of, different kind of format. 
You had a question, Robin? Yeah, um, I think we discussed this at some length uh, during our last meeting, and uh, it became apparent that uh, trying to schedule town meeting on a different day uh, was not really feasible. Uh, so I, I would move that uh, we could move forward with having town meeting on town meeting day uh, at the usual time, which I believe is 9 o'clock. And then uh, I think uh, you're proposing to have an advisory question uh, during that meeting is a good one. Okay. Do we have a second to that motion? I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion, Bill? So just a question. Mm -hmm. um, I know Mike said the advisory question could be to talk about alternatives and then you'd have to do it again next year. If I guess I'm asking if you're going to have an article on the warning to potentially move town meeting to Australian ballot, why do you want an advisory now? Because if it's advisory, then you got to go yeah, through it again. again another year. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm I'm not advocating to to change it. I'm just saying that if it's advisory, if you have an open town meeting this year, you can take the opportunity to really ask the question if that's what the board wants to do. I would. My initial reaction, which obviously is open to feedback, is that with the time constraints of how soon and close to town meeting it is, um, I don't think we as a board necessarily have the time to, to prepare and talk about options and what we think and what get input from staff. I also think, as Bill had talked about before, like we might want to have a broader conversation, get maybe hold a virtual or in-person meeting to get feedback from people who maybe can't be there on town meeting day. So for that reason, I would suggest an advisory question and then give us time to prepare, but curious what others think as well. So Chris, prior to, or during, to put an advisory question forward, you're talking about at the meeting, at town meeting, okay, and should that be a, at the front part of the meeting because typically after all the articles are read <laughs> most people are out the door so if you're going to get any kind of reasonable input i think to do it before we actually get into the before you do the budget before you do mm -hmm. the budgets should be that way you get everybody's attention and, and I don't think it may be, that's why I, I was proposing an advisory section, because I don't know if it's just a formal town meeting or a Australian ballot. Maybe from the audience, we can have something that comes up that works otherwise. I, I, I don't know. I know, like, as in Roger's comment, you know, days and whatnot could become an issue, you know, with the school and you know, the ability, but it's, it's at least, to me, is worth asking the question. I would Melissa. propose doing it on Australian ballot, because I thought one of the points was that we generally have more people vote for the offices that are, are we allowed to do that? If it's advisory, because it's not binding. Well, how can you come up with another solution? I mean, if it's on Australian ballot, it has to be like, Clear. Really, yes or no, right? Thing, right? So we could facilitate. Your yes. Do you so, support the select board exploring hosting town meetings sometime other than 9 a.m. in person next year? But that doesn't include only Australian ballot, right. also, which is part of the. <coughs> I guess. I think it doesn't it matter. Are you going to have an open town meeting this year? Or are you going to have an Australian well, ballot? Well, to be clear, oh. Roger didn't actually <laughs> specify. He just read the day and the time. I took it to mean yeah. in person. Well, yes, an in person open, open, open town yes, meeting open town as meeting. traditionally. And I'm not saying one or the other. I just felt like among the many dimensions of why this conversation was complicated is that asking the 200 people who are in the room at 9 a.m. on Tuesday if they want to be in the room at 9 a.m. on Tuesday so might not be the full Just so I'm clear, was your motion voted on? Yeah. No. no, it's one second. Right. 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 This is basically the discussion portion from where he opened right. up that question. But in terms of format for this year, I mean, we can vote the format for this year, so that staff right. has direction. That's fine. So going back, Roger's motion is to have is voting for a traditional town meeting for the 2023 town meeting. And I believe there was a second. Yes. Chris, Chris seconded. Any further discussion? If not, oh, come. 
So next week we'll finalize the warning. So Karen and I can draft potential questions and we'll send them out as soon as we can for people to consider about how it might be phrased, if there's gonna be an advisory question. And then we can also um, double check, can that question be on yeah, the ballot or does it have to come from, mm -hmm. does it have to be in the warning? Um, we'll figure the logistics of that out and get back to you and give, give some ideas to uh, get through. And I personally support, oops, sorry. Well, no, I support both. I think having it as a floor discussion is really important and I would like to do that. I was cringing a little thinking, it's my first time on the stage. I like wanted it to be, you know, nice and we have a budget and it's going to be really organized and to immediately launch into the contention of is this the format? Not that it's necessarily contentious, but it's a big thing. I'm thinking about that balance between how we both get key budget items finalized and then maybe have a conversation with folks in the room. My just initial suggestion would be to do the budget. There are other things that are going to happen after the budget, but do the budget first and then do the advisory. I know it's an important thing, but I think the budget's important too. And I think we have people, to get people will stay for the budget. <laughs> I don't know if they're going to stay for this. Discussion. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm flexible. So I just want to. Try to clarify again uh, to her point about uh, is it is it feasible to put something on Australian ballot to vote on for this question? I I'm not sure there it's possible, is it? They're gonna look uh, into it. That's what. Well, yeah, I'm looking I, at it. if it is, it's only yeah, yeah, if it's, it's not going to be binding, right? Right. And as I guess, uh, according to your phrasing, it, we're just voting to explore alternatives to the uh, the traditional town meeting. Is that right? Speaking only for myself, the information of what a thousand voters who came out to vote on town meeting day think about that question is an interesting benchmark to me. Yeah. Considering this conversation next year, seventy percent of people who filled out a ballot said, "I'd like to have it a different time." To me, that's really useful information for a future board, whoever it may be, making this decision. So that's my only thought about it. I, I get that we can't poll on Monday, Wednesday at 7, but if there's an overwhelming interest, perhaps that would encourage a future board to have a special town meeting before town meeting next year to do the thing. And that is what's done next door in Dutch Pins of Or would it make sense to do any kind of advertising before town meeting? To advertise that we have a discussion about possibly changing traditional town meeting. I don't know. I'm just throwing Lisa's out. Lisa's here. There <laughs> we go. Yeah. Although, to, just so I'm clear, to, to Danny's point, um, did, um, did you suggest, it almost sounds like you suggested the question should be, should the town create an advisory committee to the select board to explore town meeting alternatives? <laughs> Is that how Doug's very good at this? We can write back. We can write back. Next week. Week. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Options. Options. Can okay. we decide this next yeah. week? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. I thought it needed to be answered. Well, we're, we need to vote on yeah. that. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, think, yeah. Yeah. I, think, <laughs> I think we're ready to get a uh, follow up question. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion to it passes to have a traditional town meeting. Okay, next item on the agenda is manager's items. Melissa, how's the housing task force? Yep. Update from Melissa. The quickest update I've ever given. <laughs> the housing task force at long last is meeting. We're gonna meet on Wednesday for our first meeting in this room at six o'clock with the OWL. Thank you to Karen who posted the agenda. Um, anyone is welcome, but I will caution that it's a first meeting. It is scheduled to be very introductory to give a chance for the folks who we appointed um, to explain their background, to do some just level setting of things that are currently happening on the Planning Commission and other communities, etc., cetera, um, and do like a very preliminary brainstorm of stuff the group might be interested in. So I'm um, happy to share back with you all, but just wanted you all to know what was happening. Um, and I just saw Steve, I think he said he's gonna hopefully attend 
Want to attend? You can, but we're doing a lot of meetings, Tom. Uh, attend via Zoom. It's Wednesday at six o'clock in this room, the twenty-fifth. Yeah, the agenda is on our website under Select Board. Oh yes, thank you. For the time being, given that it was a Select Board, um, that felt like the place to park it. With a lot of hyperlinks, if anyone wants to do a deep dive in their spare time. Thank, thank you, Alyssa. And then we have the Winterfest liquor license. So I'm happy to, I guess, I want to just have the opportunity for discussion. So I'll make a motion that we approve Winterfest serving alcohol in Rusty Parker Park from what was the time, Karen? I think it was 1.30 to 3.30. Uh, oh, it's still open. Yay. Um, so I, again, I'm reading this almost in real time. I'm, uh, we will go ahead and advertise the Big Tree Brew Tasting events, um, 1.30 to 3.30, party in the park ends at 4. Um, if this needs to be changed, let us know ASAP. So the background is that I guess, as I read through these email, this email thread, um, Lawson's and Stowe Cider did this last year, but of course last year it went through EFRAD for permission. Um, and like Bill said, I can approve the permit once I get it through the Department of Liquor Control website, but I can't give them permission to serve alcohol in your park. Mm -hmm. So I figured if I got you to approve that piece, then it's a permission piece of cake for me to approve the permit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what was the date? Um, I think it's the 4th again. There's two different email Sorry, threads, yeah. and I apologize. So it's Saturday the 4th. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussions? We need a second, and then I want to ask. Second. Okay. Um, does staff have any concerns? I'm sorry, did Chris just second? Mm -hmm. Chris second. That was my only question, so. Is there any further discussion? There being no further discussion, put it to vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Extensions? Yes. So noted. Uh, Roger. Um, motion carries. Okay. Next on the agenda, manager side. We'll go into the uh, cemetery budget review. Sure. And the cemetery can be pretty quick. Um, because the most important number is the top line number, which is <coughs> town taxes that go directly to the cemetery. And that's not changing or proposing, to, we're not proposing to change that this year. Um, cemetery um, revenue didn't quite need budget in 2022, but that's on essentially on paper. The cemetery has got about a half million dollar investment fund. And so the, the losses in that funds are posted, but we hope that'll recover in the next couple of years. A um, couple, couple things to talk about for the cemetery. Um, once you know your taxes aren't changing, um, there's two things going on that might impact at some point. Um, first is they're they're working on finalizing a job description, and they'll have that done soon. Uh, they're working on this last year; just didn't quite get there. But um, John Woodruff is, gets a little bit of part-time pay, but we're looking for someone to um, <coughs> essentially take over for some of the cemetery commissioners who have done volunteer labor forever and are you know, just getting a little tired. Um, and so we're we're actually working on a job called Cemetery Sextant, which is Sextant. a pretty unique job title, but Cemetery so, what? Sextant. Sextant. Okay. It's a very old Church. term. Yeah. Right. Uh, but in essence, there's certain duties at the cemetery, obviously, and then there's certain duties, you know, you purchase a gravesite and there's a deed filed in the clerk's office, and there's certain duties in town hall. And we're reaching a figure we'll have to pay someone to do that and, and figure that out. And that might, that might impact us um, at some point. And then the second piece is uh, the cemetery has had a long-standing contract with someone who mowed and weed trim uh, on the cemetery was forever and did it without raising prices for the last 50 years. Um, and that person is retiring. And so we've budgeted more for contractors to, to pay for that work. 
and we're looking around for them. And uh, Bill Woodruff has made a bunch of calls to people who all say, I'm happy to do the work. And they've all given us a very reasonable price. And they've all said, I'm happy to do the work. What I can hire the staff to help me do it. And so if we don't find the contractors, it will be public works to maintain the cemeteries. So we're hoping to find the contractors um, to get it done, but we've got some money in the budget to essentially reimburse the, the highway department as needed. Any idea of the, the hours in, involved? In <clears throat> yeah, I mean, Hope Cemetery is a big cemetery. So I, just walking through it myself, um, I think you can mow it in, you know, with a good commercial mower in four to six hours. But it's the weed trimming that takes a long, long time. So I think it's. Are they doing it with old hand snips like I used to? No, no. <laughs> but I think for I think for one person it's twelve to sixteen hours of work, and you have to do it you know once a week. I'm guessing. I think anymore. the grass chopper guy came, and I can't remember if he had a crew of him and two or him and three. But so a lot Tuesday of was their day, and they came. Or know, Monday. Whatever day it was, but it was one day. It was the same day every week. I think they came at seven o'clock and they were there until four o'clock. Yeah, it's a and and you know, Everett Coffee used to call me and complain because they would be in there on rainy days and you know the weed whacking would get on the stones and the guy said, Look, I'm a contractor. This is my this is my Tuesday. <laughs> Mm -hmm. it, the grass gets cut whether it's raining the out or are not complaining. Hasn't, <laughs> hasn't rained for three weeks. You know, so. And it was a one man uh, show. No, no, I think he had a couple of helpers. It's, yeah. it's usually I'm two just guys. trying to read them asking these questions because I'm trying to think of somebody who might be able to help yeah. us out with this. I mean, he was doing it for uh, what? $1,375 a month for 12 months. Yeah. Yeah, he wanted to be paid so monthly like over the course of the year. Dollars dollars year. Dollars. This time of year, it's, the, it's a pretty quick job. Yeah. Right, it is. So we'll, we're going to have to muddle through it and, and figure it out as best we can. Uh, but it might be that the highway department just has some additional demands on them this summer. Mm -hmm. yeah. But not much else to talk about there. I just wanted to make sure it was presented. Mm -hmm. well, it's really <laughs> to buy it for goats in this cemetery a few mm -hmm. years ago. Uh -huh. So, Tom, if, do you have a figure that's going to go into public works if, if uh, so that you get stuck? That $40,000 for their contractors, Yeah. yeah. Um, some of that would essentially be shifted. It would, the expense would stay in here, Chris, and if that $40,000 had to be, if it was the highway department doing it, Tom would expense this line and then he'd put a revenue in the highway line. So. The expense will stay the same in this budget. And then um, there are no cemetery questions. Health and social service. Um, <clears throat> With multiple question, would sure. the expense be less if the highway department, you know, would be doing it? We still have to. Or they not the highway, but the you know, public works. Because you know you're not expensing out the equipment like a contractor is. We would allocate the payroll expenses there, right? Uh, but then we'd have a challenge maintaining everything else with our crew. So if we don't hire someone, something else we have to give. It, it's it's a reasonable. No, I'm not saying it's the, not. the expense that gets paid to the highway department from these other funds. So if you look at the pool budget, for example, or the parks budget and you see certain lines, uh, you know, it's the hourly rate, it's the retirement, it's the health insurance, it's the whole nine yards. So somebody who's making 20 bucks an hour really, That's you know, it's is. $38 an hour that gets charged basically. Right. So it, it's really six or one half done with the other, Mike, I wouldn't change it. Yeah, I don't believe the production rates there. You know. Yeah. Because again, yeah, yeah, typically yeah, those contractors are not paying their people for retirement. And, no. Yeah, they're they're there to get in and out. Get exactly. Out. So. On health health and social services, um, the, 
community service officer piece, some of those, you're saying last year, some of that was for, in essence, part of the salary for an existing staff person. So the salary has changed, the, the fringe, the health insurance has gone for that reason. Um, a couple of different conversations here, because this is, it's essentially three jobs. There's the, there's the health officer piece, there's the parking piece, um, and there's the animal control, all of which are difficult to staff in their own right. So by law, um, the select board chair is the health officer and then traditionally the manager gets appointed deputy. And so that'd be us and I propose we just muddle through it as has been done in the past and reconvene you know, six months or a year from now and, and see how that's going. The challenge with being the health officer is there can be and the challenge with hiring someone is there can be nothing to do for a while, and then there can be, um, it doesn't take a lot, but if a person has an issue in their dwelling, in their, in their, and it wouldn't be their private residence or their, their apartment, their rental typically, it can be a really urgent issue. And so it can, it can be, uh, go from zero to 60 real fast. Um, but I propose we stay the course with sort of the manager select board option. Um, on the parking piece, the parking control, to the extent it's done now, is done by Public Works employees. We, pay, we have two employees who take turns, and when it's snowing after hours, they come in and, and check the roads to see if we need to plow, and so they'll, they'll go in the, in the village, um, and they'll note then if we've got a bunch of illegal parkers. Um, and they'll go a few other places in different parts of the town just because it might be snowing differently high up or down low. Um, so they get paid a stipend to do that of $100 a week, um, whether they go out and whether we get a mild winter or they have to go out three nights in a week. Um, we've tried to attract other employees to do that just to take the pressure off because um, it's the same two people and by the end of the winter they're just frazzled. Um, and so I've thought about, I'm not quite ready to move on it, but I've thought about saying maybe from this line we should pay an extra 25 or 50 bucks a week to the public works employees to hopefully entice others to do it and spread the pain a little bit. I'm not sold on that concept yet, and neither is Bill Woodruff, but it seems logical to use this line to pay for it. And we're, you know, we're essentially talking 25 or 50 dollars a week for something like 20 weeks, so thousand dollars maximum. Yeah. Um, but if it entices someone and we've got and in talking to Bill Woodruff it doesn't have to necessarily be a plow driver that checks the roads we've got two other people with CDLs who work in water and even our wastewater operators so if other people are willing to do it um, maybe the little extra stipend would, mm -hmm. would make sense uh, so I'm not sold on that concept I just want to present it to you idea. and then the final piece is animal control and I understand that you've advertised that job in the past without success. Um, and again, that essentially falls to me. Um, and it's one of those jobs where it's feast or famine, just like the public health officer. Um, we could re-advertise it. And um, if we get interest, we can come back to you with a potential person um, and, a pay, and a pay scale. And it's hard to, um, you've got to work with the individual when it comes to pay, and part of the challenge is, you know, you don't know how much work there's going to be, and so I don't love the idea of a, of a stipend because you might be paying the person to do nothing. So I like the concept of, a number of towns do this, where you, um, you pay a base fee per call. So if you've got to respond for a, a dog issue, you know, you get a base amount of, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever it is. And then beyond that, you get a fair hourly rate. And I think that's a good way to handle it. Rather than pay X dollars per month when there may be no work. So those rates have to be pretty good to get someone. But that's a structure I think makes sense. Um, so I can advertise that if you're comfortable with that. And we can see what happens. We may not get any interest. In fact, we're probably not likely to get a lot of interest. Um, but I feel like talking to other towns and having some experience Animal control officers um, has to be the right person. They've just got to be dedicated and want to do it. And sometimes you get lucky and you have one for 20 years and 
Usually you don't, but I think advertising is worth a try. And this would come from the 15,000? Yeah, come mm -hmm. from the 15,000. I'm just curious, I'm curious the last time this position was advertised for, do you mm -hmm. recall that by chance? <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't <coughs> do a date on you. Yeah. I don't know. Didn't we advertise last year? No. We, uh, we, we, we never, we never advertised for the community service officer. Okay. Oh, I got it. Yeah, no, I, mean, I, mean, I do. I specifically mean ACO. I thought we did not advertise for No, it was. It was uh, going to be combined. Correct. It was, it was 2020. Might have been 2020, Danny. Okay, right no, before I came on. Certainly no, no more recently <coughs> than yeah. 2021. Perfect. Um, and you know we we put this position in the mm -hmm. budget, the the combined one for twenty four out twenty four thousand dollars that was going to start in June or July, mm -hmm. and because we had so many people leaving and so much uh, challenge just keeping kind of all of our current pl employees going, we didn't advertise for this yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, no more. But we did try for an ACO. It may have been 2020. I think 2020, because I came on, yeah. and we didn't, so it's probably, yeah. probably 2020. And the, the only thing, I never did anything personally with the animal control except as the health officer. Mm -hmm. If we got a call from the hospital saying that you got bitten by a dog, I would call you, I'd work with Carla or Karen, figure out whose dog it was, um, if you could track them down and then tell them, you know, you need to quarantine the dog for 10 days and so on and so forth. Um, if somebody called me as municipal manager and said, you know, there's a dog out there chasing deer, or there's a dog across the street from me barking all the time, my answer was, well, we don't have an animal control officer. I'm sorry, I, I wasn't going <laughs> to deal with, with uh, animals. You know, I wasn't going to go pick them up. I wasn't going to go knock on people's doors about barking dogs. So, and fortunately we haven't had a lot of that. I mean, I think probably health officer, maybe a half dozen dog bites a year that we've kind of averaged, I would say. Tom, mm -hmm. you, you mentioned, we had a discussion and you mentioned, this is going back to health officer, that you thought it would be good to have at least the second deputy health officer that was female for the for certain conditions, you know, that, you know, cases that you may want to have a woman in addition to a man. Right? You, you always want two people out of my thing. Right, you always want two people, but there are some that, you know, for, for various reasons, you might want to have a female versus a, a male. You might. Have you had any more thoughts on that? No, I'm not aware of anyone who does that specifically. Um, I, I have talked to some towns who they, um, they just handle that on a staff basis, depending on the call. Okay. Mike, interesting. Yeah. Chris? So, to the road checking issue, um, I don't know that increasing that money is going to bring anybody on additional. I, my first question is, if we do that, the two that are doing it now will obviously get that money. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm glad that they will get that money. Uh, and I wonder, I mean, it doesn't hurt to try it, I guess. It's the way I, maybe, if anything, benefit the two that have been dealing with it forever. Yeah, I think it's a lot to deal with for hundred dollars a week. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I obviously, in my opinion, I think you're going to have to go hell of a lot higher than that in order to get somebody else to bite. Uh, so I'm happy to try that mm -hmm. and give it to the two that are doing it now. Uh, if all else, you know, animal control. Um, <clears throat> I was just talking about Duxbury's animal control officer the other day. I I didn't realize that the the woman that has the kennels on Camel's Hump, I thought she quit. Didn't, didn't we have a discussion because wasn't she filling in for us for a while 
-hmm. And then she said, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because it was, wasn't what she expected it was as an animal control officer. But from what I understand, she's doing it. She's back at it now. Um, In Duxbury? Yeah. So oh, is it worth giving her a shout to see if this might be? I do think that Carla spoke with, uh, her name is Andy, if I'm not mistaken. Say that again? Andy, I think, is her name. She owns Ripco <coughs> Yeah. Yeah, I used to. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not sure she's doing it because when we had the Waterbury to Duxbury to Moortown dog, there was no <laughs> Duxbury. Yes, Duxbury. You all know who that is, right? There was no Duxbury animal control officer then, and that was what, two months ago. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I think Zeb Town turned it back over to her because mm -hmm. I actually said I, you know, I forget who I was talking to about it. And I said I thought she quit. I thought she had enough of that, and, and they said no, she's doing it again. So. Worth, and Deb, worth Deb, Deb did it for call. Waterbury for a period of time, too. Right, yeah, Zeb was good about it, you know. He took it on there for some time. But, it may have been call volume. I don't know. Yeah. But, I mean, if, you, if, if you're talking about the terms that you're talking about, mm -hmm. and she is, in fact, yeah. doing it again for Duckberry, she, depending on the yeah. amount of calls yeah. she's dealing with, if they're not a lot, she might just say, hey, I'm not digging on as an extra. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you need a, a formal action to approve the advertising? Um, no. Um, I would advertise, and, and if we have some interest, I'd come back to you with that. Is there any um, uh, risk of liability, increasing our, our financial liability uh, due to nuisance calls? I mean, just people complaining about very little, uh, which would require a visit from the animal control officer. I'm not sure about that. There's mm -hmm. probably some, if you have an animal control officer, you tend to have more penalties. Yeah, so that's what I'm position. concerned about. So yeah, there's there's some risk. I don't think it's tens of thousands, it may be thousands. Mm -hmm. Any further questions or concerns about the uh, jobs of the community service officer? There being none, I guess we're done with the health and social service budget. We can move on to the 2023 major capital expense and funding plan. Just want to do a quick review of this, and I think it, I think it can be quick um, because this does impact the tax rate. I just want to make sure that I present this is not different than what I presented before, but I just want to be clear. Um, in the fire department, the budget has their scuba system for $85,000 budgeted, and that would be uh, purchased with fund balance, which is in the fire equipment fund. So it wouldn't impact the tax rate, pulling from your reserves for that. Um, for most of these capital items below it, uh, these are just directly in the budget paid, paid for with property taxes. Um, the cemetery vehicle, which is the little vehicle I talked about in the highway side, um, forgot it earlier today, but it's pretty minor. That would just be internal borrowing, and the manager's done that historically, where we have these uh, tax stabilization fund, for example. Um, the one-ton truck for $140,000, I would propose to put that on the warning um, and request voter approval to borrow for that. That would be external borrowing, which is why it would need to be warned. That 140000 that's a complete setup. Yeah. And that's outrageous money. <laughs> that, that's the other thing. And, um, that's a lot of money for a one-ton truck. And the reality is um, we won't spend that money until 2024. Then why is it in this budget? We can, you know, we've ordered it, but it won't, we won't pay for it for 12 to 18 months, well, I'm sure. That's what that we talked about so It's got to be in the, it yeah. should be in the but budget. We, we, have to, we have to have it in the budget in order to order it. Yeah, the, the reality is this year, this calendar year, we'll pay for a truck that was budgeted at 110 last year. So right. we're always... Yeah, so and get, it like, while it, get it while it's still a deal at 140. <laughs> <laughs> Three years ago, you could get two for that price. No kidding. Yeah. And well, then the mini excavator would be $95,000. We can get that. We think and have one pretty soon. And that'd be a cash purchase once it's approved by the voters. In the uh, 
I'm not sure if it's for that one ton or if it's for something else, but didn't you have like 22,000 for a sale of assets in the- Yeah, that's right. That's for our existing, fund? our existing one that's dead. So our existing one ton, which one of our one tons, which is dead, uh, the motor is dead. Um, we knew it was on the way out. Um, they found, uh, they did an oil change and found shards of metal in Oops. the oil filter. And so we knew it wasn't long for this world. They drove it for a little while. At one point, I think, you know, it busted a, a, busted a hydraulic line or something and they fixed that. Um, but the engine's dead. Um, the the chassis is not terrible, um, but it's a, I think a 10 or 12 year old vehicle. And so we got a quote to get a new engine, but at this point it's the third engine in the vehicle. The second one didn't last all that long. Um, so we just made the decision that Time we're just gonna sell it, but someone else can but put a new engine in fall it. Behind. Well, the body's not terrible, but it's still an old body. Right. So at some point you spend a boatload of money on a new engine, which would be the third one. Right. Can't do it one more. So you're gonna to try to sell it to some poor sap or <laughs> turn it into scrap iron? We're gonna sell it because we think the the rest of it's good. We're not we're not gonna tell some poor sap it's a brand new perfect vehicle. <laughs> uh, they're gonna they're gonna know the history. Carf Carfax. <laughs> so I just wanted to, to review that to you know the the one ton will be on the warning mm -hmm. um, and everything else is just budgeted I just want to make sure there weren't any concerns about the big picture items here are you prepared to talk to the voters about why this costs 140,000 bucks yeah okay. just for information for anyone else reading this I would just emphasize that Sweet Road Quarry is also a study like the full study yeah it's not any sort of acquisition, it's a study. Mm -hmm. I'll re I'll, uh, good idea, I'll stick to that nomenclature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be probably very germane to have because you know people if they think that's the quarry is already there. And we already reviewed that in that section of the budget, I just right. so that it's there at a glance. Do you buy a quarry for that sort of money? <laughs> 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 what that is on there? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they were just going to give it to us for free. I think so. And then on the ARPA funds, um, since in the past you warned the use of ARPA funds, so we want to have some clarity for drafting the warning for next week. Um, Alyssa pointed out earlier today I did have a typo in the highway department. I had ninety thousand dollars spent. That was ninety five. So I made the same typo in the townwide ARPA letter. So so <laughs> you're off by five thousand above. Mm -hmm. um, but looking for some clarity on on the request, the biggest challenge in this list is um, I think the senior center is at least double the amount that is in the spreadsheet. That's the amount that came to you for. I think it's at least 50. I don't know if Chris, you mentioned you might No, you're probably pretty close. I, again, without actually seeing it, but. I think it's probably, did you talk to Skip about his <clears throat> church? To Skip about his church and it was uh, 58, I believe. Yeah. So, yeah, that's very cheap. And so, um, I guess we're just looking for you to let us know what you approve, what to put on the warning. None of the ARPA funds, if not approved, will impact the tax rate. Or mm -hmm. Take the expenditure out of the budget, too. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd love to start with some of the bigger things that maybe have less or fewer contentious opinions, such as um, the bridges and the gravel roads, at least to start. Um, I think we heard you know, the massive input on infrastructure from the constituents. When we put out the survey, we know these things need to be done. Um, so I think including these um, would be prudent, a great use of funds, and um, agreed on by as many possible people as anyone could agree on anything. Um, so those two, I think we could, if all are in agreement, move forward to town meeting bank. 
I would agree with that. Me as well. How are we going to deal with this? I know we've heard just in the public comment, CB5 are kind of looking for additional funds. Are we? So I, yeah, so that was a couple of straws that broke the camel's back. We've yet to talk about the next one. My fear. Do you uh, mind? I'm sorry. I am sorry to interrupt, but before we move forward, do do I wanted to bring those two up because I felt like they required less conversation. Yeah. So before we just, is, if everyone's in agreement, we can kind of check those off and then move forward in the conversation. Does that work okay? Yeah, I thought we had kind of. Oh, okay. I just didn't hear anything from. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. I didn't know um, anyone else. Okay. So I kind of had this gut feeling when the ARPA funds originally came to the town. I had some personal sense of urgency to try to appropriate this into the town budget for town things uh, for fear of other asks from, we'll call them special interest for lack of a better word. Uh, and my fears kind of came <laughs> to fruition. Uh, I'm disappointed in the fact that the way it looks right now, uh, if the sheet holds true, the town will have gotten a third of, or not quite a third of the ARPA funds to go towards municipal appropriated things. So just speaking for myself, this sheet is far from finished. Mm -hmm. This no, sheet I is every that. request we've ever that. got. There's <clears> one <throat> I want to. That's why I put in my two cents. Okay, right I just now. want to be clear that this is a list right. of a yeah. laundry list of yeah. everything right. we've received. And, yeah. and, and, I, and it gives me a it gives me a, a, a kind of disappointing feeling. Not that I I'm disappointed at the asks for the money. I'm disappointed that. I don't want to say this, as a society, we are in this type of financial difficulty that whenever money gets appropriated for one place, it seems like there's a lot of people after it. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's telling in, in some sense that it seems like we're really overspent as a, as a nation. Mm -hmm. uh, it's almost to the point where, like I said last week, what would any of these entities have done if that money had been appropriated to us? Or what kind of pickle or semi-pickle would, would we be in? Um, so that's my two cents. I was hoping to get more out of it for the municipality itself. Um, and we'll see how this, this finishes out. So that's just... Just my two cents. Okay. Unless it seemed like you had. Well, I was doing the same, quickly doing math for Chris. So I did some. So I really hear you, Chris. I think my first thing would say I appreciated Danny's <clears throat> approach because to me this is the full menu of things we've discussed with candidly really varying levels of depth. So as we said, the gravel and the bridges we've been through. To your point, Chris, because I really hear you. I did the math when Down Street came in last week. If you add up the 100,000 to Dalton Street, the Ice Center 100,000, the CB Fiber, and the WASI. So we've already, that, that's 326,000. That is going to other entities. I would argue WASI is quasi-municipal, but that's right. besides the point. But that's 21%. So that's a fit. I'm not saying that's nothing, but also to me, recognizing that this funding was to support the community and make folks whole after ARPA. I feel like Danny emphasized with the road, if we then have gravel roads, town bridges, and we consider the highway department funding, the 95, that's 36% going pretty strongly into direct infrastructure. And we're, again, we're not done yet, so this is not a full breakdown, but I think in my mind, that's how I'm thinking about it. Um, for practicality, I would propose we move the down street up to the list to go on the warning because it felt like we had consensus on that at right. the last meeting mm -hmm. if the board is supported. Mm -hmm. um, one I wanted to clarify because Tom had a note is on the reappraisal. So um, do you want to? Yeah, so this, I'm almost ashamed of myself for not thinking of this earlier, but it, someone made a comment at the last meeting, I think it was Chris, and immediately the wheels started turning. 
So we have a reappraisal fund with $200,000 in the fund balance saved for future reappraisal. And up until very recently, um, we've got notice that we're our CLA as well. We've got to reappraise. Um, we've got until the end of the count, and, and this summer we'll get a letter uh, from PVNR about about that, and we'll have to respond to the letter. But essentially, we we originally had until the end of the calendar year to tell PVNR when we're going to start that process, but we didn't have to start it quickly. And initially, my thinking was to delay that, given it's tough and given it's expensive. Um, after the ARPA idea came up, my thinking is I've done a complete 180 on this, but I think it makes a great amount of sense. And that's still right now is being reappraised with their lister, our lister, and the contractor. Um, I believe we can be reappraised for around $200,000, which is what we have in that fund balance. If ARPA funds instead are committed for the reappraisal, that fund balance can be moved. So that fund balance. And that would be part of the, essentially after town meeting, that's something that we could work on with the auditors to do the accounting entries. But that fund balance could be moved to the capital projects fund. And so if you're thinking about town uses of ARPA funds, um, this is another way to put it into the capital projects fund, but then there's not an urgency to spend it like there is with ARPA. And just to forecast on capital projects, um, the Stowe Street Bridge is in the state stocket, and we'll pay, I think, 5% of that, and that's $175,000. So a little bit has been paid, but those big bills aren't coming until, until 2024, 2025. Um, so <clears throat> this is not formal. This is just my very informal thinking, is that given that, and given the bridge right down here needs work, and that's a half million plus. Mm -hmm. My thinking is if we are going to work on that bridge, that would be a good project for 2024 or 2026. We don't want to do that bridge in the Stowe Street Bridge in the same year, for sure. Yeah, that's going to tie stuff up in a hurry. But, you know, that bridge is estimated last fall at a half a million dollars by the time we do it. 600, not going to get cheaper. Uh, not going to get cheaper. So if we had some ARPA funds, that we could put into the capital project fund and save until we need them, that might be a good, good right. option as a down payment. Does ARPA allow us to do that? Yeah, so the, what are you talking about? The ARPA would be used for the reappraisal. Oh, okay. And, and then we take the, that other, and you take the other the money that was saved. And, and the that reason account. why it's, it would be good to use the ARPA is because you got to spend that by yeah, 2026. 20, Let's, we have to appropriate, have to next appropriate year, right? it by next year and yeah. spend it by 26, I believe, okay. right? So the, essentially yeah. left pocket, right pocket. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but, it's, but it's, a, it's, it's a way of but, but making things work for us. But from a slot accounting perspective, it makes sense to do that. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it locks it up, too. So. Yeah. Oh, Alyssa? I really strongly support the proposal to use for reappraisal for that, I would say. I think it buys us time, you know, in this category of thing. And I would say, though, personally, I more than capital projects, like Chris talked about, bolstering the reserve fund for this building or some sort of other strategic fund. So I'm personally not sold yet on just putting the 200,000 directly into capital projects, particularly given that we did that pretty significantly with the bridges. But I think doing the reappraisal this year and getting voter approval for that is really prudent and gives us more time flexibility to and, and just to be clear the reappraisal wouldn't be done this year it wouldn't be done really until 2024 and 2025 but it could be done by 26 i believe and, and you're just going to appropriate your market for that for expense that but i'm saying you can get that approval for that expense now right. to get it off the books in that way yeah. And with the inflationary rates as they've been, you're still comfortable that 200 would cover the appraisal. Yeah, I mean Stowe's and the lack of uh, ability, lack of professionals. Stowe's um, is doing it now, and, and their number is 330,000, mm -hmm. and they've got. Um, I, I, I had the number in my head, but I forget. It's something like 40% more tax parcels than us, 50% more tax parcels. So. And they have a lot more complicated yeah. parcels too. So I think that's a pretty realistic number. 
and you're still going to be getting, unless the state changes their uh, law, you're still going to be getting about 20 grand a year coming into the reappraisal fund that you know, we can yeah. help to, you know, buoy that. If it, you're always planning for the next reappraisal, like yeah. it or not. Yeah. Mike? Roger. I'm ready to move forward uh, uh, committing to the uh, 200000 for the reappraisal uh, and then moving the money that's saved into the, the capital fund. Do we have to decide? To, we don't need to make the decision tonight on where those funds would be redirected, correct? Like we can have those conversations. You do not. Okay. Any further discussions on different line items? Yeah. So, I'm, I'm with Eva and I had to uh, ask for uh, uh, ARPA money there. The Tom wrote us an, an, uh, an accounting of, of how much money is involved and uh, uh, the underlying idea is that uh, in a, you know, March 2020, when it looked like the world was going to end, the e -fund, passed and Bill Sheppelux, under Les Sheppelux leadership passed out essentially $300,000 to uh, different businesses and, and customers of the water system. Uh, that's only, actually only part of the money because the EFA, EFA <coughs> managed in the uh, Community Development Block Grant and uh, uh, what's the other one called? Uh, the UDAG funds. UDAG funds. Money. That was also, my, you know, a substantial amount of money was transferred to businesses that were, uh, you know, Mar what was March 17th? You know, they closed every bar and restaurant in the state. And every, that's, you know, a number of waterbury businesses with full refrigerators. And, you know, uh, no, at that time, there was no expectation or hope or process that was generating any federal money to do this, we were on our own. And we, we uh, gave that money up to uh, UDAG, Community Development Block Grant money. We're not saying that that's shouldn't, money that ought to be reversed. That was a hard-headed business decision. We were worried about large-scale bankruptcies. And, uh, but this, uh, our money was originally to make municipalities whole for the damage they suffered during the uh, pandemic and this is the extent of the damage the uh, without the money we have we're facing a kind of an unpleasant future where we have to raise the rates to get back to where they were before the pandemic then we have to raise the rates to make up for the money that we lost taking care of the pandemic and then, of course, there's all the money that's going to have to be raised to uh, defer the, uh, defray the expenses of the inflation and, uh, that that's has occurred in the last couple of years. It's going to be brutal. And uh, we're hoping that uh, we can get some help here. The uh, realize it's late in the process. The, uh, uh, and it's, an, it's a nice, it's a large piece of change, but um, We, we did what we thought was right, and we, and we took a lot of money to, uh, out of various accounts where we could have it, gave it to business people to keep them in business. Well, the, the waiving of the base charges, that benefited every single customer, yeah. homeowners as well as business people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, as we, uh, the, and it also benefited by the school directly. Who are on there? You know, every every uh, school or government user so, benefited the town too. All the base charges for the <coughs> for all of the town water accounts right. and sewer right. accounts for the were town helped. customers who are, who are not in the water in the EFA. No, I mean the I mean the town of water. Town is, you know the oh. pool account, the the rec field, this building. They yep. all have lower. Yep. Charges that uh, yeah. they would have otherwise. Just be clear right. that they did not leave anything for the state of Vermont. <laughs> just, just, in, just in response to um, 
yes, I do believe ARPA was a lot to make individuals and businesses whole and municipalities, but it was also kind of creative where you had lost money, where you could make long-term investments in, into your community that you otherwise couldn't because of that those lost revenues. Yeah. So that's why I think we've been looking a lot in terms of what the future of Waterbury is and what we will spend to, you know, you know, yes, you want to help, you know, institutions in need that are critical to the community, but also you want to look be looking forward as to things, you know, you know, you don't want to yeah. be it's like if you have a you know, a 1975 Chevy, you don't want to be putting money into it. Yeah. Or a truck. <laughs> but we're not asking for the whole thing. And I think that Bill Sheffleck was uh, reluctant to get into this conversation uh, for fear of uh, reigniting hard feelings between the uh, EFUD and the slight board. I want to say there's no prospect of hard feelings about this is that, you know, we did what we had to do, we're proud of it. And uh, if we have to take a beating, we're gonna take a beating. But if, if the uh, $300,000 is a lot of money and it's a lot to get out of, uh, it'd be nice to uh, get it back. Alyssa? Roger. Oh. Uh, Bob, um, Skip came forward uh, a couple a few weeks ago uh, with yeah. a proposal uh, to put in a new water line uh, from Guptill over towards Route 100, yeah. uh, which would uh, help to provide fire protection for that section of town, uh, as well as gain you some new uh, clients for for EFUD. Uh, I'm wondering why we're not looking at that. Well, we are. The um, that's that's like a different. Thing we we have operating budget problems left over from the, the <clears throat> pandemic. Right. The project you're describing has a new estimate of four million dollars. Uh -huh. so we are beating the bushes and or you know uh, different uh, uh, grant and loan funds. Uh, When we started the project, we believed that there would be federal grants also, you know, coming for civil works projects, for public works projects like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a change in the law late in the process. We sent the money to the state revolving loan funds. Right. And so now we're having to go through the resolving, revolving loan funds in order to raise that money, uh, other grant. Uh, programs and stuff like that in order to to raise raise that money. But uh, so are you are you asking why? I mean, I thought that, if if if, mm -hmm. if they gave you three hundred thousand dollars for the yeah for that line, would you be happy? <laughs> As opposed to, well, I, I think Roger's asking. You know, two separate asks. Rather than a bailout, put here. it towards something that's meaningful. There you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> the, uh, so, putting on my EFUD hat for a minute. Yeah. yeah. If the town were to grant EFUD money for that project, or any project, that's great. Um, EFUD has a cash challenge now. Mm -hmm. And so it would benefit EFUD more if the town said, we are giving you X dollars for that project. We'd like you to get back and at some point when the project happens, show us an accounting of how you spent it. But in the short term, if EFUD could have the cash, right. it would be a big benefit to EFUD. EFUD had to issue a, essentially a current expense note this year to just pay some bills. Mm -hmm. And so... And is this 300000 reflective of uh, the hole that uh, EFUD uh, needs right now? So the... 2022 isn't audited, um, but last I, and sometimes there can be big numbers at the end, but last time I checked, um, 2022, the, the water and sewer combined had a, had a net position of a little over a million dollars, which is solid between the two funds, but the sewer fund was in a deficit of, a, I think, about a half million dollars. So the water fund had a surplus. Mm -hmm. um, 
and neither fund, uh, both funds ran a deficit this year. So um, I think the last EFUD meeting I previewed rate increases and they're very substantial. Uh, doesn't mean they all have to happen at once. Doesn't mean we can't issue short-term debt in essence and make the rate increases over time, but um, they're very substantial rate increases that will need to happen, I think, in the short term. That being said, I don't think EFUD has raised rates for water well, or soar for a, about a decade. Well, not quite. Well, it's, eight it's, or nine years. Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's earlier than that. We were, they were supposed to raise rates in 2020. Mm -hmm. And then when the it pandemic did. hit, not only did they not raise rates, but they, they gave away uh, lots of money. Um, <clears throat> and well, anyway, I'm not really part of the equation so, anymore. I've got things that I yeah. that are in my head. But so, so from an EFUT perspective, if you said there's X dollars for this project, mm -hmm. um, EFUD in its books could earmark it for those projects, but it's not a big benefit to EFUD today if you earmark, pro earmark funds for projects that won't happen for a couple of years. Right. right. And, that would it would make it easy. any money that comes in obviously can be uh, will will benefit them. The from EFUD's perspective, the best thing that you could do is to say the three hundred thousand dollars that they're asking for was lost revenue to EFUD. They they made a choice to lose it. Uh, they could have billed it, but if they did, it's likely that some of the businesses that are still here now might not be. Um, and, you know, there were, there were properties that closed down right after. They managed to be able to sell. They paid off their UDAG loans and everything else. But that $300,000, if the town gave it to EFUD and said, here's $300,000 $300, for lost revenue for EFUD, and then let the EFUD commissioners decide how much goes into the water, how much goes into the sewer, that could be beneficial. And you, you're going to, you know, there's, there's how many uh, thousand water customers? About 1,100, yeah. And there's 750, 800 sewer customers, um, something yes, like that. I think it's about 30%. And so don't underestimate the fact that, you know, those customers will get a direct benefit from this. Because as Tom's saying, there's, there's going to be a rate increase. There's, going to be a rate increase whether you give them this money or not, but if they had this money, the rate increase is much um, less dramatic, let's put it that way. Uh, well, I guess I would start by saying I appreciate the service that EFA provides to the community. We have gotten in-depth water and sewer presentations <laughs> this year, and we have a housing task force meeting on Wednesday, and one of the background items is where water and sewer service are provided in the town. So recognize that it's a value to the community. Personally, I find the reimbursement ask a little challenging, um, in part given that I was one of the 20 people who voted yes to giving $600,000 of ARPA before I sat on this board and EFA voters said no. I know that was a little more complicated than that. Um, I will say I really read your memo in hearing Preliminary engineering expenses for water and sewer line expansions can easily exceed $50,000. To me as a town select board member, an opportunity to invest ARPA funding to help you all make a project like that a reality and leverage other grant funds, also akin to the December ask and fire hydrant and fire protection support are things that in the schema we just discussed and infrastructure investments, things that I could more easily reconcile in my head as being future infrastructure investments. And if there is a time sensitivity to having funding now, um, I would be amenable to working to that. I guess just, you know, again, I was economic development director at the time and I'm also on the record for saying thank you for waiving the quarter base charges because it did make a difference. I think the fact that it seems some of it is not sustainable and there is the short term thing Using ARPA, it, it, it's a tough ask for me, candidly. Thank you. All right. And that, uh... Yeah, you mentioned it earlier, Bob, and I, you know I'm going to try to 
keep my distance from this tit for tat with uh, what used to be the village and in, in, in the select board. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the fact that, uh, you know, my wife hasn't been a bookkeeper for 35 years in the town, I was fully aware of uh, the water department and the sewer department's yeah. standing. Uh, I know that the sewer <coughs> department has been running in the red for quite some time. Um, that, uh, to some degree, upsets me a little bit that that wasn't kept up on top of more better. Um, uh, and now the consequences of that are coming to surface. Um, and I'm just afraid that this 300 ask is going towards part of that. Um, and again, rather than putting it to something that we're being faced with here for the long-term future, uh, we're paying for, I won't call it bad management, but debt from the past that has accrued over time uh, has gotten us gotten to where we are today. Yeah. Well, I, I, I have to respond to yeah, I that know. a little bit, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, no, I, and I, you know, if you want to call it bad management, but you have to understand when in 2010, uh, and we have the numbers to back it up. We, we can treat 510,000 gallons a day at the wastewater plant. And we were averaging 350 to 375,000 gallons a day in 2010 and 11. And the flood came. And for from August of 2011 through December of 2015, there was nobody at the state complex. And they're the biggest customer in the system. And we are now treating 200,000 gallons, even. even if that, right? 180. So you can say bad management if you want, but when the flood came and we went from 350,000 gallons a day to 180,000 gallons a day, you know, you, we lost a lot of revenue there. And, and the state rebuilt and good for the state, they rebuilt, they put in new lines, they put in new pump stations, and there's nowhere near as much, I mean, what we found out, if you want to talk about bad management, you know, the state was paying for a lot of river water that was going to the sewer department, you know, into the sewer. Can we so use that thing back up? It's not really, I, I, you know, and, and then we have right the opportunity right to, you know, move forward to raise rates, and then the pandemic hits. So, I think it's not quite as bad management as you're. No, doing. maybe, maybe, maybe. I, what I meant was it should have been reacted upon sooner than than what 10, 11 years later. We're into twenty twenty. Three, so well, like I said, 2020 is what we were going to raise the rates and, and the pandemic hit. And we didn't raise rates and we gave no, away. I meant they should have been done in 2014, 2015 is when the rates should have started creeping up to try to well, keep pace with this. Thing. We can find out when it was, but I don't think maybe, it was maybe all made bad management. Was yeah, it was anything done yeah. in 2020? Or how about just in 2020? Yeah, what percentage? Whoa, can we do one conversation? Sorry. Here. Okay. The you know, what's the engine of economic development in this place? It's beer, right? <laughs> the uh, beer brings people in. Bit, bit, you know, difference between Waterbury and Williamstown is we got beer in Williamstown, yes. You know? And why is it? There, there's, what, five breweries in town? How many are there in Montpelier? Zero. There's one place that makes hard liquor. But there's zero. And the reason for that, well, there's a couple of reasons. Our guys know more about beer than anybody else. That's fair to say. Our water tastes good. We have a sewer plant that can accept more sewage, and Montpelier does it. And finally, our cost of water is somewhere between half and uh, two thirds of the cost of water in Montpelier. And that's a, that's the engine. That's an engine for economic development right there. 
They just built in the midst of the of this pandemic thing. They added another brewery on Stowe Street. All we got to do is kill to kill a golden goose. There is to run up the water rates to the same as my beer. So to a certain extent, and it, this goes back a long way. Is water water and sewer and the inter, interstate exit of what Waterbury has to sell, and um, keeping the rates down and, uh, is, is a good long-range plan for the economic down to, uh, life of the town. I don't want to waste a whole bunch of you guys' time. <coughs> the, uh, Thanks, Bob. We appreciate our perspective. So can I clarify, Tom, on this sheet is just the 300 ask. Would it be more accurate to reflect the previous ask as well on this sheet? or? So the previous ask, I believe, was for the hybrids, correct? Mm -hmm. So right. they, yeah. the EFUD commissioners last week wanted to specifically remove that. Okay. And that's why. And, and the reason was was the the, the benefit, the need for the, the need for the for the cash not Thank being earmarked necessarily. That's all I need a clarification on. Thank you. Uh, one, just one last clarification, Bob. Um, if we're not ready to move with a full three hundred thousand, uh, would a uh, hundred thousand uh, would that impact uh, the rates to a favorable degree? Uh, that, would, that, would be, that would be a favorable thing. Yeah. The uh, uh, I don't know what the it's an ask. And, you know, and, and uh, if I got if I got a nickel, I wouldn't be mad. <laughs> if I got three hundred two hundred ninety nine thousand dollars, I'd be okay with that too. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thanks, Bob. Hey, thank you for taking, uh, giving me your time. Thanks, Bob. Any further questions on any of the line items? So, um, uh, Roger. Yeah, I uh, just got the uh, letter from Spring Hill School uh, today, and uh, it seemed a little out of line to me, honestly. Uh, and uh, so I uh, called them up. It was a snow day, so I didn't answer. Uh, but I was just wondering if there are any or how many uh, Waterbury residents there are attending that school, and uh, even even if it were a couple, um, I don't know. That that that's one that. It seems pretty easy for me to say, not not a strong contender for the funding. Right, I agree. I, I agree. I agree with that. Even though it's a, a small amount, there's in town money. daycares. It. Yeah. You know we're going to give. Yeah, and this is this is on the far side of Waitsfield. Uh, I'd be surprised if there are many Waterbury residents there. We also, I think, had talked about maybe staying away from education in general right. and the complications. So. And it wasn't uh, a strong uh, response from uh, the survey that we did. Um. Can we not? Uh, I'm, I want to talk about the senior center. That amount. You know, to preserve ARPA funding, can we not consider that? I know we looked at senior center in our budget, but including kitchen. You know, I I still question that that will get done at twenty five thousand dollars. I I just don't believe it. And I would say, do we need to decide for this year? Like, so what my alternate, pro I had the same instinct on spring school, but that in senior center, I feel like I'm not ready to make fun of. Yeah. I guess Spring Hill School, it seems as though we, the consensus is no regardless. But for the senior center, I support the conceptual allocation of funding. That if there isn't a final budget, I would be inclined to wait until next year to include it in a budget. But that's just speaking for myself. Yeah, I'd like to see more information a detailed budget and if the ask is twenty five thousand, and they have a potential budget for the project how do they intend to fill you know gap. yeah exactly fill the gap so i i'm yeah i'd like to entertain it in the future but with more information and preparation on the part of the senior center um and since we discussed spring hill school i'm curious um you know, they reached out, and I don't know that anybody's, I mean, you called, but we haven't necessarily had communication with them. So um, I think as a board, we should discuss, or be able to discuss reaching back out to folks who've made 
requests and letting them know it will be on the warning, it will not be, we need more information next year, et cetera, and how we'd like to see that. So you don't necessarily have to decide that today, but it is something that we should do soon. <coughs> Other items people wish to discuss. Um, I said at the last meeting that I, uh, I, I felt that uh, that supporting uh, this housing initiative was important, and that one hundred thousand dollars out of a twelve million dollar budget was, uh, I think, a pretty reasonable request, and uh, that I would support it. And so I'd like to say that I'll support it again. Again, the the hundred thousand for downstreet housing project at fifty one South Main. I think we already said that's going on. Okay. But it should be at the top, yeah. But I will say my one dis I don't know if we're distinguishing that as opposed to the other three, Tom, is it correct? Would be its own as opposed to the other three will be passed by being embedded in budgets we've already seen for bridges, <coughs> gravel roads, I guess reappraisal. But mm -hmm. Or I guess town bridges and gravel roads are already in the budget, right? So just in terms of voter approval, it's embedded in the budget. It's, it's embedded in the budget now. If you would prefer to own it, we can do that. I personally am okay with those in the budget. Downstreet, I think we talked about we wanted it. Yeah. And then and you know, my question is reappraisal. What do we think? Because right now we had also we were transferring fifteen thousand in anyway, right, under your revision for reappraisal. Yeah. And suggesting keeping that. As, Keeping that as a baseline. Yeah. So then should the, would that reappraisal transfer for potential future use be its own? Um, that, would be, that would be, we won't have the reappraisal expenses until 2024 going forward. Um, so that could be in the budget. Um, and it would just be revenue in, revenue essentially into a reserve. And, and we can budget that within the budget if you prefer that. That's easy enough to do. Mine is less, mine is, I guess, like, if we think it's a good idea, should we do it now and <laughs> the best can be it? Or should we just wait because it doesn't matter and do it next year? And we just know it on a piece of paper. I'm, the yeah. only downside to waiting is you, you have a chance of other entities. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the only thing I'm a little concerned about with the reappraisal, as much as I'm generally in favor, is the transparency. You know, I know it's money in, money out, but, you know, I truly believe government should be as transparent as possible. And I don't know how we, we would make that manipulation as transparent to the voters and citizenry of, of, of the town. We just did. <laughs> <laughs> They're all <laughs> And in the manager's essentially budget message, that can be highlighted. Okay. I, uh, there is a there is a, a report, summary of other operating funds that is in the town report and I don't think I have it here, but um, so the reappraisal fund I think is fund 41, and right now it's showing the money coming in from the state and no money going out for this year. You can add on that report. You can add another line that says that shows two hundred thousand dollars going in from ARPA. It's in the town report book. It's not. And it's a budget that the voters vote on. It's a it's a conglomerate budget. There's a, there's an article. I don't have the town report with me, but there's an article. So here's here's what I'm talking about as far as the. Uh, so here's this other operating funds. And the reappraisal fund right now is uh, $96,700 went into it in 2022, which was 
some money from the state and a significant transfer from the town's general fund this year. Um, and, and then it shows nothing spent. So for 2023, it would have 20, 21,000 coming in from the state. You could show 200,000 coming in from ARPA, nothing going out. And then the fund balance is now 400 something thousand. And if you, I think you should wait to transfer the, the out to the capital until capital. later. Yeah. I wouldn't budget for that now. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's it would be there, Mike. It's okay. something that can be seen. And there's an article in the warning. <coughs> there's an article in the warning that takes me um, the motion. takes quite a bit of time to write, but the, the, the motion for the budget talks about the library, the general fund, the library fund, the, uh, the highway fund, and then it says plus additional monies for special articles, and then transfers um, to designated reserve funds estimated at 152,000. So it, it's all there. Somebody might read that, or when you make the motion, somebody might say, well, how do you come up with that, whatever that number is? And Tom can walk him through it if he has. But it's it's in there. No, so I, I agree if it's there. I don't, you know, we've had a discussion here today, yeah. and how many people will, there's no one on here listening, and how many people do, you know, re read, listen to the tape right so but it's it will all be in there and it will be included in the budget article and if you want to put it on an article and have a special article no i think if, it, if, if, if the budget line item yes. says that i think that, that, that it's all it's all in there Lisa? I think that's also part of our job as select board to communicate. To and communicate. so part of why like the percents were useful to me and then thinking about thank you for drafting the select board report, but being clear about how this is part of our package of funding related to infrastructure and long term <coughs> future investments. And by doing this transfer now, we have the option to have it for capital in the future. I think part of that is our job to communicate. I agree with being transparent. And I think we can do that. Yep. So what does that essentially leave us? I, the way so I'm looking at it. Is four, five, four, nine, six, four. If we do not have an EVA. If, yeah, that excludes the EVA since we haven't made any. And it would be one, two, three, because we've got the five miscalculation on highway. So I'm just no, going to- I thought I included that. I'm going to throw this out there. I'm not completely heartless when it comes to <laughs> Same. Uh, I never suggested that. I would split that number in half. Uh, wishing, wishing that we didn't have to, but um, split that number in half, and then that leaves us 178 based on my calculation. But there's a number I'm missing there. I think 178. So if you nine sixty four. Three or four. So the one fifty is everyone. You state what you said again, Chris. Where you were gonna split we'll split the EFUD ask in half. Okay, two hundred and fifty to EFUD for recouping assets. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, based on this sheet right now we've got a bottom line so surplus. Go if ahead. If EFUD got hundred fifty Based on the, the allocations you've approved, um, assuming you're, sounds like you're good with the town bridges, you're good with gravel roads, reappraisal and down street, mm -hmm. and 150,000 to EFUD would leave you with $304,964. Yeah. Plus no interest. That's pretty so good. So I asked for <clears throat> consideration of 150 put into uh, municipal. <coughs> I'll call it the rebuilding fund <laughs> for building repairs and alike. Uh, you had it in as what? There was a what was your line item that covered 
Yeah, so fund 74, fund 74, um, we put in $106,880 this year. 20 came from uh, the Municipal Building Operating Fund and 86,600 came from the fire department and nothing was spent. So I can go look at what the fund balance is, but it's probably somewhere in this range. That's from the just building maintenance? Can I see that book for a second? Yeah, so this fund here, 74, we put $20,000 in in 2021. This year we put 1066. So there's $118,000 oh. in this fund. Now. So do you really need another 150 no. in there? No. no. I was going to say. We can even that out to 150 then. Yeah. Right. I was going to say 50, but I say we take it from the reappraisal. That was one of my ideas. In this 200,000, <coughs> I support your proposal to bolster it if we think we need to on the 100. But in my mind, that's part of what could come out of that 200 that we already said we're transfer, you know, because we, we said put it in reappraisal, but we still get to decide where that goes. So bear in mind, we talked about a month or two ago, consolidated mobile capital project right. funds. So mm -hmm. um, I'd encourage you to think in those terms and to just think of the reappraisal as we've got a couple hundred thousand dollars that will go towards the capital projects fund, and that's roads, bridges, buildings, everything. I remember when I also was a basket case at that meeting because I personally have Alyssa's savings and then have nine different boxes where it's the birthday fund and the travel fund. And so forgive me, it's how my mind works where they're in separate boxes, but I hear you. Well, my fear of that is, you know, to me, this particular line item stands on its own when it mm -hmm. comes to capital fund projects. <coughs> And it's one of those things that can very easily come in jeopardy if uh, something else comes along. And I, I think you could, if you want to have a separate standalone building fund separate from the capital fund, I, I think you could probably do that. If you wanted to, like you've got 118,000 in there now plus interest. So if you wanted that 150, you could get some money in there somehow. And that could. That could stay, I think that could stay on its own as a. And within the capital projects fund, I envision it as we still, I'm not there yet this year, but present you in future years, but what's in the fund and in essence, you know, a three to five year funding mm -hmm. and spending plan. So we could, right. you know, so the thought is if you've got just a, just to put a number to it, if you have $300,000 in your capital projects fund, um, you know, for all the projects combined, you, you know, you, you know, you'd see a five-year plan where, you know, X dollars goes into it and then, you know, at a certain point, a big mum, a big slug of cash might come out for buying a fire truck, something like that. So what we were trying to get away from was that right now you've got capital projects fund and, and some are deeply in the black and some are deeply in the red, because um, you sort of manage it on a net basis anyway. Right. So, and so to clarify, um, 150,000 for EFUD was proposed. And if everyone's in favor, that would be a separate warning, right? That's what we we're all thinking. Oh, God, I don't want to be the EFUD stick in the mud. I personally think it should be on um, infrastructure versus backfilling. I guess it makes no, maybe it just makes me feel better. And maybe it's totally arcane and I'm causing bookkeeping nightmares for Tom, in which case I will back off genuinely. Um, just personally, me saying to a town taxpayer, yeah, we spent $50,000 to look at extending a water line and on fire hydrants for a portion of our town is like as clear and simple as gravel roads and bridges. Um, and I guess maybe I just need to suck it up and say reimbursing them $150,000 that they gave away during COVID is too. So that's fine. Uh, that's just my personal. I don't want to be arbitrary. No, I agree with you. So. And I'm thinking of, if we, you know, the messaging also is looking at it as helping to reduce the significant increase <coughs> in fees for 
you know, their customers. Also, um, like, am I the one who says it that we asked for you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I hear you. I, hear you. No, 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 I don't. I just don't. I don't want to complicate. Can I ask, how do our water and sewer rates compare to other municipalities? Um, I, I looked at that a little while back there. They're lower on average, but it's really there's a really wide band. There are small systems in the Northeast Kingdom, for instance, that are you know really struggling. They've lost their customer base over the years. Um, they won't be low right. much longer, I don't think. <laughs> okay. And they might be a little bit above average. Okay. Thank you. Roger? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm with uh, both of you in terms of uh, preferring that uh, the, the money be invested in uh, uh, infra the infrastructure project that was presented to us. But the fact is that they actually do need the money now, uh, to, and they did uh, really help out the community uh, at a time when it was really needed. And I think we can make a very compelling argument uh, for, for allocating this money to, to make them good for that. Uh, I, 300,000 ask. Like yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not prepared to go to 300,000, but I'm comfortable with 150. Um, I also wanted to respect the fact that uh, Chris uh, did make a proposal uh, to us for another $50,000, uh, and he's stayed here for quite some time. Uh, we, we can talk a lot longer than this, Chris. Um, but. Uh, uh, the fact is that they did come to us for seventy-five thousand uh, dollars previously, uh, and, uh, with what was called a one-time ask. And uh, at the time, I moved uh, fifty thousand uh, dollars to make, take advantage of the matching funds. We knew that there was a hundred hundred thousand dollars available, so we could have moved up to a hundred. But given the lack of clarity as to how many people are actually going to benefit from this, uh, I, I felt comfortable going with 50,000. I still feel like 50,000 is the right figure. I'm not prepared to move forward, but I did want to address the issue. Yep. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Any other comments? What did you decide to do for EFA? Is that going on the warning or in the? We're still circling oh, like a pack of shots. Yes, we need to pull you out the rest of the year before it disappears on us. So where are we at now? It's basically 150, and Melissa needs to get over her accounting problems. But yeah, but tell her to the accountant. I know. <laughs> I'm a little, I was like you, Melissa, a little uncomfortable based upon, you know, I would say sometimes the rate payers have to pay, especially because they didn't pay at one point. But if they're having problems, I think that's going to be a long term municipal issue. And, and to be clear, I'm not I opposing the transfer. Know. Really, my only thing was do, about saying for something. But I, right, but for the point of some, I mean, to be honest, I asked down the street the same thing too. I'm not just trying right. to pick on EFLAT. I said, can it be for a building expense, not general operating? So that, um, but I'm okay there. I guess my other question would be, and just to say in general, is like, I assume they already looked at other ways the town can support them through borrowing if that was an option and that wasn't an option. Is that correct? Well, the town has done that in the past using the well, I'm just in the memo they were going on and on that they had to borrow $45,000. They did there. borrow from the town. So that's what they're saying. So they were just noting. Yeah, that was all I was asking. The so current that, expense borrowing they did last year, in March last year or April, yeah. both boards said, if one or the other of us needs to borrow the land, well, yeah. can we borrow? They, they borrowed a very small amount. It's already been paid back. It was, you know. But just they more. highlighted it in the memo. That's why I brought it up. <clears throat> Anyone else? <clears throat> So, in kind of summary, I think I think we have heard that Spring Hill is is a no. Uh, senior Center is for right now a no, but possibly put it on the budget or and or consider it in within the municipal budget. 
the town bridges and the gravel road. I think we're all in agreement upon that. I think we're all good on the reappraisal issue and down street and with the reduced EFUD uh, down to 150, I think we're in agreement. Yep. I agree. Yep. So just because you've um, had some conversation, can I get some clarity on how we should draft the, is the EFUD piece in the budget? Is that warned? And if it's warned, can I have some clarity on how we might draft that warning language? Uh, I know Alyssa wanted it tied to something. I did for the board. I'm not going to be the one who asked for it. Can you repeat that in here? I said, I defer to the board. I'm not going to be the one who enforces it. Well, I, to your point, Alyssa, I just, I think. I don't know that they got anything that's shovel ready right now that they can put that towards. Um, and quite honestly, it'll probably be yeah. five years. Can we put a project be, uh, fruition? If they, have, they have four projects that, or three projects that they have designed and have permits for. The one that you like the best is the most complicated one <laughs> and will take the longest to do. That's the one, and the one that Roger talked yeah. to from Guptal Road. I'm not saying I like the best. It's the one that Skip brought to us in a formal proposal for our company. Um, yeah. Well, somebody <coughs> suggested earlier tonight that that was uh, a compelling one. Uh, Just gave us a memo. <laughs> there's others that uh, up behind, you know, to do the transmission main. Talked about that a little bit with uh, paving on. Um, up, um, up behind the, the uh, on, uh, yeah, on Kennedy Drive. Kennedy yeah. Drive and yeah. Acorn Drive and all those places. Yeah. And that's one that we would um, likely just put in the EFUD budget and, and, and do that one as right. part of the operating budget. It's not such a huge number. Right. Um, and, and those are all water. The, the <coughs> nice part about saying it's $150,000 for lost revenue is let's them do with this ARPA money, what you're doing, and figuring out where it can be best used for them. If you tell them it's $150,000 for fire hydrants up in Watery Center, well, it's going to sit there and not be spent for a while. Right. Uh, you've got $1.5 million, and you're figuring out what's best, 435 for bridges, 300000 for gravel. If you just give them $150,000, they can, Figure better than you, right. figure out where it will best benefit the community and that would be my recommendation. And I agree with you. I mean that's the way I I was looking for the right way to word it and you just brought it out. So it's it's uh Yeah, I'm fine with that. My point would more be and I went back to so I'll take my own advice from earlier on the messaging. I think messaging the fact that they are actively working to expand and serve a greater portion of the community mm -hmm. is an important big picture piece. But if lost revenue is the financial management government piece that makes sense I support that if we do it on its own or in the budget I have no preference and I wish we were in a different circumstance to be honest with you I wish everybody was level funded and, right and, it's not I don't think it's a great investment and I don't want this <clears throat> no uh, and I'm just saying that <laughs> it's unfortunate that we have to keep trying to catch up Someday it's, it's, it's going to be all the time, so the town can make the decision. Just, just so you're clear, too, um, even with this under fifty thousand um, dollars, I will propose a very substantial rate increase. Right, they need rate increases. Well overdue, it's, you know, long overdue. It's un unfortunate. I mean, you, you know, Mike just asked about what what are our rates compared to everybody else. Well, our rates are. Uh, fictitiously low because they're running in the black or the red or the black. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. Do we want it as its own warning or do you want it in the budget? Do board members have input on that? What was that, Danny? Do I was curious if any board members have input on whether they want it in the budget or <coughs> warning? And then if not, I was going to ask Tom if he had a recommendation either way. Put it in the budget. <clears throat> yeah. I, I'm afraid that if we warn it, it it'll get voted That's down. That's kind of what I was thinking too. Well, could, could you say that again? I, 
I'm afraid that if we warn it, it'll get voted down. Really? Yeah. I am. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then with due respect, I think we should put downstream in the budget, because if it's the only one we're voting separately, why are we holding them to a different standard? Uh, WASI is also a warned. Uh, I thought uh, that was already in the budget. Oh. So uh, the transfer to WASI was in the budget. Possibly the senior center, depending upon how we do No, that's, we decided not yeah. this year. Yeah, okay, yeah. My understanding was WASI is the pledge was to warn it this year, and that's because the funding was contingent on two other towns paying okay. a component. That's mm -hmm. I, don't, I just, I'm not trying to, there, I, there, I agree with you, Roger. And well, yeah. There is a similar amount already in the budget for WASI. That's the, that's yeah, not that's, this. That's just an that's appropriation. The, yeah. Oh yeah, no, I thought the transfer, ARPA transfer was a lie. I missed it. Well, now, let me ask you, why is your premonition that it's gonna get voted down? <laughs> <laughs> uh, or, or based upon what knowledge do you think it's Police Department. <laughs> there we go. No, I mean, you know, and this is, and Bob alluded to it, there there has been uh, sort of <coughs> division in this town between yeah. what's perceived as a village expense and, uh, and a town expense. But I, I, I mean, <coughs> it's a lot easier for everybody, especially for EFUD, if it's in the budget. I think if it was on the warning with the right, you know, <laughs> Motion second and discussion. I, I think it would be able to pass, but mm -hmm. uh, it's more certain if it's in the budget. Yeah, well, it certainly can be pulled pulled up for question in the budget. Right. Well, so right. right. I just didn't have it in the budget. Okay. That's right. Any other questions? Okay. Whichever Roger says he would like to see it in the. <coughs> yeah, I think Danny. I was okay with that. Melissa, I think we're unanimous. Okay. I'm using the word consensus a lot tonight. Is love that. that. We love, love that. that. So, is, um, so, so senior center was a need more information for later. I just Spring Hill shot and CV5. a message to my buddy, my fire under the butt. Okay. Move on that thing. So Spring Hill wasn't a uh, definite, no. <laughs> and then is CV5 or a late uh, later, or there is no later because there's no yeah. match. So that's a no. I just want to be super clear. May thirty first, by the way, is the deadline. Thank you. Right. May thirty first. Why, why can't Justin just get some of the restaurant supplies that you give him a call? Yeah. I don't know, but it's 123, and we need a warning 130, so. Yeah, yeah. That's a, so that's up for later. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Unless, I mean, like, per the conversation no. we had about a reappraisal. Any other later. clarification needed on this? Sorry, Mike. No. That's, that's no. Right. I think we're good. Is anyone going to <laughs> reply back to Spring Hill School? Yeah, we didn't Okay, separate question. Tom, can you reply back to Spring Hill School? Yes, I will. Thank you, sir. So, do we need a, a clarification on where we are as far as our performance money that's left? 304964. Three hundred four nine six. You said mm -hmm. nine six four. Three hundred four thousand nine hundred sixty four dollars. Sorry. Nice joke. Just threw numbers at you. Because okay. that's taking out. Yep. Yeah. Oh right. I mean, I'd rather. I'd like to see the remainder going towards infrastructure of some sort. We have a year. Yeah. I want to have a problem finding three hundred thousand dollars and an infrastructure within a year. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, one bridge. I mean, can we put it into a slot where we know it's safe and locked up there? I guess is my question. <coughs> yeah, I think we have a plan on the uh, ARPA request. To move now to the special articles. So Karen did a great job of pulling the list together. Oh, Carla had this list. I take no credit. <laughs> Aww. Come on. And my understanding is um, there's one change, a couple of changes, but one is um, 
Uh, Mike, what is the name of this? Right, again? Central Vermont State Police Advisory Board. So that is going, that was 100 last year? 100 last year. And that is OB0 because the board is probably dissolving. <coughs> and for the rest, I don't believe, I believe there's one other change, and that is Green Mountain Transit reduced their request. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, really? Substantially, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we know why? No. I got a letter for a budget reduction. I wasn't about to ask too many questions. <laughs> I think they might have gotten a lot of ARPA funding. I see as there a transit agency is one potential. It didn't. Let me ask people, pardon my naivete, Green Mountain Transit on their routes from Waterbury, do they charge? Because I know it was on the TV that the Burlington routes they don't charge it. GMT operates Burlington and their waterway. I take it frequently from downtown. They are fare free, I believe, through this June, which is their fiscal year because of our funding. Of our <coughs> um, they were fare free last year and they continued it this year. I'm a huge proponent of a policy because I would drive otherwise because I'm pig headed about these things. No, but when it's free, it's really easy. Um, at least the route to commuter to Montpelier from the train station is free currently. It has been for about two years. Yeah. Thank you. And then Alyssa had a question about the senior center. And uh, what we discussed was uh, everyone on this list gets a town appropriation. Uh, we have other organizations that are embedded in the budget. Sorry, not organizations, but funding that we work in hand with other organizations in the budget, and uh, the Rotary is one where we buy the fireworks. They're in charge of it. Um, so that's a fee for service. That's something different. Um, but the senior center is a pure appropriation, and so Alyssa's question was, why don't we put it all in one place to be consistent with the rest? The other thing I wanted to add is I did have five thousand dollars extra in the budget for in the budget. Um, not in here, but in the budget for Rotary, based on some earlier conversations we have. And that was above and beyond the increase for fireworks. That was Rotary had talked about um, some funding for concerts in the, the park. The concerts in the park. They've now backed off that specific request, and mm -hmm. they're. And I'm meeting with them tomorrow, but I believe the preview is they still need, they still would like that five thousand dollars, but it's essentially the message is that. Um, the town, the town will need to work with them and spend a little more funding on keeping Rusty Parker up to spec. And that's within our parks budget, so I don't think we need a special article for that. That's just work that we do. And I frankly, frankly like that approach better. So the 5000 would be budgeted? Embedded in the parks budget. Embedded in the parks budget? Yeah. I mean, it probably won't have to be five thousand dollars higher than it was last year. Just we'll, you know, pay those expenses out of the parks budget, yeah. and so and they're not going to request money for the for the concerts. My service. understanding as of today. Okay, so they're switching it from concerts to maintenance, more or less. And it's our park. And it's right. yeah, it's now it's right. is, yeah. is Select One's park. Oh, I get. And who and, yeah. and then, did, well, who did maintenance on it? So the the town. <coughs> The town for many years now mm -hmm. has in the parks grounds maintenance budget. Yeah. The lawn mowing mm -hmm. has been done by the town yep. and the trash and recycling has been done by the town. Mm -hmm. All the other did stuff that the Rotary, for that? All, all the other <laughs> stuff that Rotary did, um, they would come to EFUD and said we did XYZ on the picnic benches or ABC on the on the stage for the building, mm -hmm. and the EFUD paid for all of that. Okay, so, got it. But that so, was a small percent. It was like five hundred dollars. That's right. You're on Rotary. You know what's going on. Yeah, oh, I do. It was way more than five hundred dollars, Mike. That's what Al Lewis told me. Okay. So, that well, that's what they received. Wound up receiving from from EFUD. Okay. Uh, this, this seems like a better solution, so that's yeah. great. Yeah. It keeps us within our lane. Yeah. So I guess one of the questions we have is, would you like all of the senior center funding to be a special article? 
And with due respect, because I've been a budget jerk, the, part, the <laughs> senior center, when they were requesting their funding, asked the same question. So yeah. I was just asking why there was the breakdown and how much of it. Agreed. Yeah. It's the only one on here that is partially. And I think it was they asked for a, what we were told is they asked for a significant increase one year. So the 12 5 is in the budget and the 20 is after. And she wow. just said, as a local chair of a volunteer board, it was stressful to have that much. Again, I'm okay with keeping it. We don't need to make any changes on my account. But she asked at the meeting, which is why I asked. So, so are you suggesting moving the 20 into the regular budget and making the reg regular budget 32 5? I was or, just questioning what the rationale for the breakdown was, and if it was consistent, I have no recommendation. No, no. Okay. Well, the rationale is, and I think I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, um, it went from like 5,000 to 10,000. And at one point, they said, we want to ask uh, one time appropriation. So the select board said, all right, we'll give you your 10,000 on the regular budget line but your one-time appropriation of whatever it is, 15,000, let's say, I don't know what it was, is gonna go as a special article. That got voted in. The next year they came back and they said, well, we needed it more than one year. So the select board That's just one kept it <laughs> one, time, one time a year. Now it's up to 12, you know, last year, it went from 10 to 12, five in the budget and the 20 stayed and this board minus you and Roger plus two other people last year said, well, we'll increase the 10 to 12.5 and leave the 20. So there's three options. You can leave it 12.5 and 20 like it is now. You can put 32.5 in the regular budget and have no special article, or you can put 32.5 in the special articles and only have I nothing in the only budget. I think it's now 39, right? Yeah. Oh, whatever. 20% more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it sort of does stick out like a sore thumb, mm -hmm. $20,000 compared to these other $2,000 asks. Uh, so I think the word senior answers it all. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Everyone <laughs> who, who attends the town meeting. Uh, <laughs> meals on wheels. It's, it's a hard thing to say no. And same old people cost so much money. <laughs> I'm one of those old people. We're all going to be. Ooh. Our oh, one, yeah. Nice senior here. Um, but I think it makes sense to me. It's a hard one because it's been a constant, you know, since I've been on the board, there's been a creep in terms of requesting money. You know, and I don't know if at some point they had better fundraising, you know, in the organization or it was better run. I don't know. What you know, I think it's it's improved that they have had a audit, which I think is a step in the right direction. But we just had a conversation about rate structures. They are reimbursed four dollars for a meal that costs twelve dollars. So no surprise, there's a shortfall. It structurally doesn't work. So yeah, I, I guess you know from a management perspective, it doesn't impact me where you put the money. And I don't care. I mean, we're, we're going back to a traditional town meeting, so let's keep our tradition and it's fine with me. I mean, just so everyone knows, I called Tom today too to ask about the Central Vermont Health and Home Hospice line that was in the public safe. Not because I have any problem funding Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice. They just get 13.5 in the budget. And I said, do we get a report for them? Do they ask every year? So I have no problem with the request. And I recognize I was paid for three years by a line item in the town budget. So Ooh, it's exactly. not stress-free when it's just a line item in the town budget either. But I think just in the future, I would love to think about some consistency where, like we tried to, if you haven't requested before, it needs a new one with signatures. When you hit five years, you don't. And maybe it exists, and I just don't know it. But I don't know. Keep the 20. I mean, can you call questions on either one, right? But out of the out of the budget or as a special article, you can yeah, you could call yeah, a question yeah, for yeah. clarity and, and explanation <coughs> either way. So I guess the one thing I'd add, if you think about the future, um, so if it's 39,000 in 2023, uh, how much do you think it will be in the next few years? Mm -hmm. Does that change your thinking about how you, where you highlight it? Well, that's why I'm saying if it's if it's split the way it is now. <coughs> yeah. 
It hasn't bothered the voters that it's split. No. No, I guess I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Well, you don't want to sit next to the three people angry. Mother, apple pie, and Chevrolet. If anybody's that, that's 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 12.5 and do we put it in the just line to, or Just to be clear, I think they asked why, but I, I think it's me asking why. Because, you know, Carla just knew this, pay him out of this pot of money for this many months, and then I have to switch and pay him out of this pot of money. Why? Why can't I make it one pot of money? <laughs> well, I can tell you right now, if we put it all in special article, there's going to have to be some explanation. I'm sure yeah. somebody's going to call I agree, out. Chris, but if it's passed for years and years and no, years. I get it. And I, yeah, then I think the voters support it. Why not put it in the budget? Yeah, I think it's better to have the split because that way the voters can ask questions, you know, on the special article for the excess money. Because I know they're going to get, get that much money. And I think if people speak to why, where the money's going for, they'll I think you'll get a, a firmer vote. Well, I think Tom is right. I mean, you, you do, the, the board has had a policy in the past that, you know, if, I mean, and I use LEAP as an example. It's the last one, yeah. $2,500 for LEAP. <clears throat> and a few years ago, or probably four years ago now, Duncan McDougall came in and asked the select board if it could be five on the special article. And the select board told them, we're willing to put 2,500 on there and just leave it, but if you want it five, you gotta get a petition to ask for five. And he, $2,500 wasn't worth going out, getting the however many signatures. So it's still 2,500. So I think Tom's question is the better one to ask, is if you make it 39.5 in the budget, then next year if they ask for 45, do you just put it in the budget or, I mean, so. I don't see them changing for a while. I think they're gonna be asking for more and more and more. Well, they did get changed because I know I asked some very serious questions and that's what caused them to get an audit. Because I was not very happy with what the financial yeah. status of that. So but at least he's, they get he's, he, he's saying though that so he doesn't have, see that they're going to be asking for level funded going forward. They never have. They broke even. No, they've been increasing. They essentially broke even in 2022 without a director. And so they they had that position filled. They would have right. had a deficit there. We're still at, you know, 6 7% food price inflation. They need to fundraise more. That's unfortunately, and I don't think they're doing it. So, yeah, I, I think to some extent their challenge is they're, they're Fundraising, I think, depends on your clientele to a large extent. And their clientele are people who are needy in the first place. Yeah, they don't have any. So it's a challenge for them. I have my notes. Food costs, covering employees, 1163 per meal, 380 right. per meal from the Council on Aging, plus sometimes extra. But if they go over the number they pre allocated, it doesn't count. 783 per meal that they need to make up. And they served 18,000 meals last year. So like, that's the thing they did a 91K annual appeal. I don't care, their increase for this year was $6,500. It was 20% increase, what line do we want it in? Well, I think that the reason it's split is to give it a watered down feel that, you know, if, if you're not paying attention to the budget, it looks like senior center is staying level funded right along. Mm -hmm. um, it's unfortunate that's that they have article. to think they need to do that, but either way, wh whatever they come, what, whatever increases they're asking for, they still got to come in front of this board to get it. Yep. So I would propose that we put what we, <clears throat> what was in the budget last year, uh, in the, in the budget, and then their proposed increase goes on the special article. I agree. I would agree with that. Sorry. I don't know. <laughs> My they so mailed me a letter, though, asking me, didn't they? They all have to mail me a letter asking me for funding. Oh. And so I, so I think I have a letter that says they're asking for Do you have a letter to ask, ask I mean, for I mean, I know I have one from everybody else. 
Well, they didn't they come in? They brought us. They came the in request. and made a presentation. Will that serve yeah. as that? Yeah. Right. Watch but I'm me. just. Do you know the the funding letters that I'm talking about? I collect them all. Yeah, but I don't. The ones that you get afterwards. I get them. I ask for a report and a funding letter. And so all these organizations have to mail me a letter that says, I would like to request $200 funding for yeah. 2020. But we got Except that letter asking they for 39000 the board. They, they made us. their request to the board. Okay, so, so there's you, no letter. You don't think I have a letter that says 20? Okay. All right. You, you might be right. I mean, I'm I, not I saying you're I don't wrong. know that you yeah, have I'd a letter. Yeah, I'd have to go look. I don't know. I don't think you have a letter that's asking for 20. 20. Okay. Well, that's what I was saying. Right. It could actually say 39.5 on it, to be honest. I think that's the letter yeah. I have. I think that's the This is 39.5. Yeah. So then yeah. we'll put the 6% increase on the special article. Okay. Any further comments on any of the line items in the special article? <laughs> if not, we'll move to the 2023. I'm sorry, Mark, can I interrupt? Mark, just make sure I capture this correctly. We're leaving the budget for the senior center as it was in 2022 and increasing the special article to bridge the gap. Did I understand that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, thanks. Mm, correct. <coughs> and since we'll have the warning next week, I just wanted to preview the tax rate. Don't hold me to the number, but I can guarantee you it's not going to be 58 cents. Um, it might yeah. be 0. 0.543, uh, depending on the challenges. Sometimes you know you have, you have a spreadsheet and you then you translate it to the town meeting day format, and you know you you have these nightmares where you know did I <laughs> did I miss 20 grand here, 20 grand there, or did I find you know or do I find it? Um, but I think it's really close to where the final number will be. And so um, I think I can guarantee it'll be less than 54 and a half. So I just wanted to preview and just make sure at, at that rate that the, the board was comfortable with that overall rate. And if we needed to reduce, they give me some marching orders about how much uh, we would need to reduce by. Was it, are we at 53 right now? We're 53 right. even right now. So uh, you're at, and just to be clear, you're at 53 right now because last year, in the town report in the motion or the the article that people voted on they were asked to set a tax rate as opposed to set a tax amount to be raised mm -hmm. and they set a tax rate at 53 cents when i and i just looked at this this afternoon when we put the tax rate memo together in july the grand list didn't go up last year as much as we anticipated so the tax rate last year, if it hadn't been for the vote of the voters, that it would be higher than 53 cents, should have been 53.4, almost 53.5 last year. So, uh, and a lot of this obviously depends on how much increase you get in the grand list. And Dan and Tom have talked about that, but you're not gonna know for sure until July 1st. Not making anything dramatic. Dan and I have gone through the numbers. Um, what I will say to you is the challenge is not 2023 per se. Um, the challenge will be, um, I think we're going to have to put more into the capital project funds in future years. Um, you know that the 5% of the Stowe Street Bridge is poking at 200 grand. That can be paid off over a few years, but it's still 200 grand we'll have to raise. That hasn't been in budgets of late. And then that bridge down there is 500. So even if we throw ARPA funds at some of this, um, it's a fair amount of cash. Never mind the the one ton that's 140, and all those things will keep increasing. So I I think the the just forecasting on my own. I think the future of the town is going to be um, 2024, 2025. I think more three to four percent, which would be a couple of pennies on your rate. I think it's going to be pretty hard to stay in the one penny range, but I think we can do it for this year. Okay. Due to inflation, most of this. Due to inflation, and you can you can defer it a bit, but when the big capital projects happen, that's when you you have to get there. All right. The challenge is going to be that that bridge is going to be a big challenge because we're getting 
state bridge funding for Bridge 25 up on Slow Street. And what are we getting, like 85, 90%, 95%? 95% is what he's told 95% on that bridge. And this bridge here, you're eligible for the same state bridge program. It's just that when does they're show? not going to give you the money two years from, and can that wait? And, you know, it depends on if you talk to Bill Woodruff or Alec, how long the bridge can, how long <laughs> Who should we be talking to? <laughs> <laughs> you should Bill Woodruff, because you uh -huh. should be better answer there. But and uh, what's the, I mean, uh, we mentioned it earlier, we don't want to do both those projects at the same time. Don't want to do uh, them at the same time. Yeah. So and so, what's the timing on the Stowe Street Bridge? I believe twenty twenty five. I think. Okay. So we want to do that one either the, probably the year after. We think we'd want to wait for the state to get through. I'm not sure we can delay it three or four years, but um, twenty twenty four will really it'll be probably the budget challenge for the year. Do you know so yet much. whether the four thirty five and bridge projects that you had Austin is he going to be able to do them this year or? Um, we're pretty hopeful. Okay. I guess Woody's initial reaction was probably not, but the more they've talked, Good. the more he thinks he can slip them in. And then we're also more hopeful that um, we can do the water line project that we talked about and then repave those roads as part of the paving project. Um, talking to Woody, um, We've always used ductile iron pipe for the water lines, and that's a 12 inch line. Um, ductile iron pipe is a 40 week lead time. Mm -hmm. um, but PVC is acceptable, acceptable um, and available. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it's not more expensive. And so the option is do the project with PVC or don't do it for another year. So I think we'd all prefer to do the water line and pave the road. Melissa cool. has a question. Just mechanically, as Bill just alluded to, I recall that we had there was the rounding down. So is there concern over the difference between the one one and the fact that like are you are you recommending that we're gonna vote on a tax rate as we don't set them less us short or um I've always devised budget three put on the tax rate and the grand list changes usually are you know if it, by that point based on what we know now, if it's you know 15 or 20 grand in total lost revenue or gained revenue, that's a lot. So it's usually not dramatic, so I think it's pretty safe to put on a tax rate. So we think we're okay with the 54 cents, you know, recognizing- Well, I'll have it fine-tuned next week to the a little bit more. And like I said, it might be 54.3 or 54.08 or And maybe I'm though. just not remembering, we can vote on a multiple digit. <coughs> yes. That yeah. many times. It's four digits time. in the bill. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you can vote on- in the tax rate. But I'm still yeah. thinking, and I thought, but, so know, we vote on four digits, but we do <coughs> round down to two digits when we bill? Or no. is that wrong? Okay, well, no. we, we sometimes have had a three digit, you know, four digit. But I'd probably tell you if you're at, you know, 54.19 to just make it 54.2. Yeah. Thank you. Right. So the question is in that range overall, um, folks okay or do we need to go back and and reduce it? You're talking about a penny and a half, right? Well, over a penny, yeah. I don't think it'll be a penny and a half in the end. Penny point. One point, one or two. Yeah. I think I said there in the last meeting, maybe the meeting before, that we've been <coughs> averaging, averaging <coughs> since I've been on the board around two cents there was a year yeah there was a year there was three years in a row i think we were at 51 but it doesn't go uh, no those were exceptional years i mean we still got more done with the same amount of money you know, we got more done mm -hmm. uh, i completely get your thought process about cost increase here in the next few years. Um, you know, what is it? What's it, it may end up being more than what you're anticipating. Uh, I often wonder what that means for all of us, but um, I guess so far we've done good um, over the years. Um, and this is right on par for where we've been. 
you know, penny so just to two, penny to two pennies right in there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the 53 cent tax rate this year is what the voters set. I mean, inflation is still seven ish, right? Right. I mean, a, a 5% increase gets you to 55 and a half. So if you're at, I mean, a penny and a half, um, a penny and a half divided by 53, it's, you know, 2.8%. I don't think anybody can complain about a 2.8% tax increase if inflation is 7%. Right. I mean, and, the, and the risk is if we if we went lower, then there'd be a bigger mm -hmm. jump the following right, year. Right. Right. We're doing what we've just been criticizing right. lots and, of other people for doing. You know, and if you think that if you think that next year is really going to be a challenge, or future years that you got to put more into the capital funds, <coughs> I mean, could you live with a two cent increase go from fifty three to fifty five this year? Uh, you know, two cents. I mean, I, we don't know what it's happening with the schools. I mean, that's the always the wild card. And yeah. Chris, you and I have always said it's always it's a shame that we have to pull back from what we need to do just because of that. But a two cent increase is three point seven percent. Yeah. And so half, half the rate of inflation. Yeah. If Tom is <clears throat> thinking you're going to be at fifty four and a half or fifty. Four and a quarter. Fifty-four and a quarter. Um, I think it's a pretty fair number. I think so too. And I mean, I, hence, hence my reasoning for wanting to use so much of the ARPA money for the municipality. Yeah, I get it. Is to try okay. to cut off some of some yeah. of these anticipated increase uh, by dealing with stuff with that money as opposed to having to go to tax and bond for it or you know what I mean. <laughs> and I say going forward, you know, the, the increases I'm seeing in 2024 and 2025, you, you don't want to ignore them, and, and it has to color your thinking, but the town has pretty substantial reserves. I mean, you've got a tax stabilization of a million dollars, you've got really great liquidity, and so um, I think you deal with those increases in those years. Yeah. I don't think you need to, you're not, you know, if you were EFA, I'd tell you, well, if you want to do that project, you've got to raise, you know, the cash now. So you've got to mm -hmm. do with it now in a different way. But so I'm not suggesting, Chris, we're going to see five cent increases in those years. I just think the, you know, the two to three percent increases, it might be more like three to four. Yeah, that's why, you know, things like this quarry thing, I've got like both fingers crossed, hoping that this thing's going to come to fruition for us. And there's other things, you know, that we can talk about too, that hopefully you can skinny the cat there a little bit, but at some point you're gonna run out of options of just how, you know, how uh, efficient you can operate. There's only so much efficiency you can acquire, and then you're out of, you've done all you can internally, you know, and the rest is money after that. Okay. <clears throat> Move on to the next subject. Uh, seeking select board guidance on public utility filing related to a temporary wireless facility at 91 State Drive. So this came before you about a month ago, I believe, and they were essentially looking for you was a notice that they were applying. So now the application is completed in front of the Public Utility Commission. I see no compelling reason for the town to weigh in. Uh, the project as proposed is what you saw before, that 84 tower. Temporary, I'm assuming, means permanent someday, they hope. Um, yep. Yeah, nothing has changed. And so I, I don't think <laughs> there's a need for the town to weigh in and formally write a letter to the PUC, positive or negative. Mm -hmm. But we certainly can. And anyone. And, you know, public comment period, so. Does anyone have any great reasons that we should weigh in either positive or negatively? Uh, for me, it's a positive. Uh, and um, our fire chief was saying that he couldn't get cell coverage uh, downtown. Down by the subway, it goes, cuts yeah. right out on you. 
Yeah, um, which is a concern. It's a public safety concern. Uh, so, and I would hope that this might address that. But um, so, uh, you know, if anything, I would say that we would uh, support it. Okay. On that note, I'd like to ask one other simple question that's been on my mind for a while. Maybe you know more than in your, the rest of us here, Bill. What the hell actually goes on down at the state complex? Are they even <laughs> occupying the <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just seems like yeah, no activity whatsoever. It's, 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 it's sad. Like a war. <laughs> I mean, we've, I've talked to our state representatives and state senators in the past. I've talked to the, the administration. You know, the challenge is that we had COVID. Many of these people ended up working from home. They like working from home. Yeah. They don't want to go to work at the office. And you know my my point to the state has been okay. So you keep sending this grant money to redevelop and to invest in downtowns. Don't you think the biggest thing you could do is put fourteen hundred people or eleven hundred people do on something they were supposed to have in the downtown? That that would be better than any fifty thousand dollars. Tell them to flush the toilet. <laughs> and then they lose half their workforce because so I don't, they I put don't, their job big for being forced to go to the office. I, I, don't think that, either, so. I don't think Tom or I know how many people that they have down there right now. That's what I was curious about. Sure the percentage. Not full. I know a couple people who work there. Everyone I talk to at the state says they're partially remote and they come into the office once or twice a week because they enjoy yeah. coming in. You know, there's two distractions. And to Bill's point, I mean, I met someone from Concord who works here, Concord, Vermont, in the kingdom. So they were commuting an hour and a half each way. I was like, I don't know how you did that, but of course they're not that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I guess my question was going to be, if they're not doing anything with the building, then can they turn part of it over to us so we can do something with it? More so productive? there is a, do we want to, there is a bill in front of the legislature now about Stanley Wasson and getting that turned over for affordable housing. Mm -hmm. So that's stage one. Um, I met with Teresa this morning and she's talking about the former armory, which is a different state mm -hmm. property. So that can be a different project. And then, yeah, the rest of it, I think we've got to meet with our state reps. And My sister has a desk down there for what it's worth. Has <laughs> <laughs> she seen it recently? Two days a week. Yeah, I have a couple friends here that in there three days a week, yeah. but mm -hmm. certainly like a very small percentage of the building. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, awesome. back, back when that got flooded and it was a big cry to get all the state employees back in, I was the only board member that opposed that and I wanted to see mixed use down there. Hmm. Retail, um, housing, um, some state maybe, but you know, private business that way, it, to me it gave more of a flexibility that if when you've got a lot of small entities and one goes out of business, it doesn't, there's not a big no. hit to the, in the community, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I know at one time her department talked about like a desk sharing to eliminate leases on other buildings that the state was keeping. I don't know if that's whatever happened, but so to like a co -work. Well, that, that was that was what was happening when they decided to, re, to build this. They said, we're going to build that back. And I forget 1,100 or something like that was the the capacity. And what they were saying was that as the leases in Colchester, Burlington, Montpelier, not Montpelier necessarily, but Barry places Natural. expired, they would bring them here and put them in their own building. Yeah. But, I mean, you could put lawyers' offices down there. You could put makers' fear. You could put uh, any number of things, retail stores of, of some sort, or you know, like a mini mall. Or <laughs> oh, well, you could. No, I you know, well, never yeah. thought I'd heard Christiane. Yeah, Christiane. <laughs> yeah, maybe a chance to, to get that housing that you were asking for. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, right now, having it empty doesn't serve anybody. I mean, we're still getting our pilot, but still, that's that's money that they've taken from us that they're just giving it back to us, you know, along with other towns. That's <laughs> well, they haven't taken the, the they haven't taken the pilot money from us. What's the local option? Yeah, the pilot money is from local option tax money. So every town that passed one, no, that's we, true. We benefit when, whenever a new town enacts that law, we benefit too because there's right. a little more in the pot. Right. 
but yeah, we don't we don't want the pilot to go away. No, Chris, commercial real estate is the most frightful thing right now. You have cities that just they're afraid with their you know everyone gets so comfortable working at home in their sweatpants and stuff like that, and it's you know. I see. I see both sides. Did it this morning. I, there, there's a good side. It's okay, it happens. There's a good side to being productive, but there's another good side to being having collaboration with having people together. I see both sides of the equation, and I know, especially in big cities, commercial real estate. You know, a lot of big companies are forcing their their employees to go back to work because they have invested in these properties. And it's going to be a you know, and employees are good basically saying, hey, we want choices and don't go elsewhere. By consensus, the board would like to continue to stay aware of what's happening at the town office complex in case yes. there's a future use for an outbuilding that we could repurpose into something. We, 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 we have a new meeting room. And has no comments regarding our temporary wireless room? We feel good about the salt tower? I think we're all, I think, does anyone have any negatives? I think we're all positive about it. Do we want to write something positive? Roger, do you want, I know you were the. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, if someone's able power. to do that, I, I agree that I think it is a positive and would be okay with a positive note. I don't have the bandwidth to take on that project. Right. It could be very pro forma. My sense is it's the PUC. Yeah. I mean, we can ask Martha Staggis, but like they do yes. their thing. Yeah. I mean, it's exempting them from local permits. I'm sure they're it, doing that. I think I we could say we it. support the project yeah. as proposed, yeah. period. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That'd be great. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for our participation. As long as Tom no one did. thinks we ever are going to not uh, want to say that. Uh, that's the other. That Tom, Tom on said that he can tell the letter okay. saying that we support wow. this initiative. So you pass that around to us and. Thanks. No one thinks we'll ever go back on that. That's my other. We can say nothing. If we say we support the project as proposed, we are on the record as supporting the project as proposed in perpetuity. I'm just naming it. I am comfortable because it's not, part, it is, you know, within the parameters that we've presented. I'm comfortable, but great. If others are not, that's true. Okay, the last item on the agenda is discuss February meeting agenda. Uh, I assume we're meeting next Monday. Mm -hmm. Next Monday, and then it's traditional after the January marathon that you pause in the first meeting in February is typically canceled. However, however, the second meeting in February is on a holiday. President's. It's a holiday too. <laughs> for staff employees. Yes, employees. thank you. Oh, thank okay, you. yeah, yes. yeah. I didn't want to. You will actually not do it. Trigger that one again. So um, that would be. Oh. So we're going to meet uh, next Monday, and then the uh, following the, the third week is. Do I meet on Tuesday? So I've got Wait, I've what? got conflicts on Tuesdays. So I've got it. All right. I don't want to the third, which is Thursdays. a third Monday, which would not, I mean, sorry, second Monday. So which I could still be Monday. Right, I was saying the which 13th. Which I, could meet, oh. I could meet the 20th, it wouldn't bother The 20th me. on the holiday? Yeah, I don't get that day off. Wait, is the 13th the holiday? No, the 20th. The 13th no, is no, the wrong Monday. Uh, the 20th is the holiday. Right, but if we move the 20th to the 13th? Okay. That's fine by me. The 13th is good. Yeah, so we just meet the second uh, Monday. We want to wait so long between the 30th and the um, town meeting day? 20th or just go to the 13th? 13th. Just tell me when. <laughs> um, you had a grant that was yeah, 215 a deadline. Are we applying to Better Connections? <coughs> yes. Okay, so we're okay. So then uh, we should. So so were you planning on the 30th? But if, if you yeah. planned to meet late in February, then I would put the Better Connections grant on the 30th. Okay. And I, I have to, because Steve Got it. Yeah. needs to talk to you before okay. that deep into February. So. I think we could put off a uh, parade, though, right? And yeah, I don't even know now. now. CV, CV Fiber, the correspondence that Tom and I had was they wanted to come in and just give you an update, but I, I'm not even sure that wasn't accomplished tonight. 
that kind of thing. Well, let's look back. Yeah, let's look back at some of those emails and see what. Yeah, there was a little bit of conflicting. Yeah, yeah so was... we'll, let's, I'll double check too. Okay. But I don't think it needs to be on. Right. Agreed. So what's everyone's pleasure for the meeting day? 13th. So it will be just the one meeting in February. Yeah, and if something big comes up, we'll see what we can. If you're only meeting once in February, just a heads up. I don't know how Karen will approach it, but Carla never was, never came to the meeting on the night before town meeting. I think town meeting is the 7th, right? Of March, mm -hmm. And the first Monday of March is the 6th. Mm -hmm. So if you meet on the 13th and don't meet again in February, then and you're having an open town meeting, you're going to have to meet on the 6th to make sure you have all of your, the motions the board is going to make for the budgets and all the rest of it will have to be done. Can we move on the 6th? Could we Maybe move the last the meeting Monday? on the 6th up to the 27th? Yeah. Uh, you could. How's that work for you? So meet. February 13th and February 27th. Yeah. And then you don't have to meet. Then we don't have that problem. Right. That would make more sense. Um, both are the planning commission, so they just are going to stay in the cell room forever, I guess. If you <laughs> this one. Sorry. Yeah, choose your allegiances. <laughs> it's like you never knew them. It's been months. <laughs> 13th, 27th. I think I have to reread the email, but I think Jeff Kilgore offered to assist with writing motions. Correct. Yeah. So, yeah, if that was wanted. So did you or move? not meeting uh, March Jeff six. Kilgore, when I approached him about moderating, he, I believe he in his response to me, uh, made an offer to assist the board in writing motions if they needed that assistance. Mm -hmm. I think he's probably very qualified. So. On the 27th, would we kind of have a go through on what we're all going to do? Right? So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Karen, can you check if Jeff is available for that meeting? Sure. Yeah, I'd be happy to email him back and ask him. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. If there's nothing else before us, uh, I entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, so move. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Good to talk. Good to Karen. Yeah, thanks, Beth.